It's a really good intro. Oh, damn it. We're, we're live. There it goes. Very good intro. What's up, guys? Welcome to Kind of Funny's Lord of the Rings in review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every Lord of the Rings movie. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the Hispanic heartthrob, Andy Cortez. Good morning, everybody. Gosh, I just, I watched, like, I finished watching it again just a little while ago. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> we got the big dog, Kevin Koala. Oh, wow. We got the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hello. And joining us for all six weeks of this show, oh, Funhouse's own, Elise Willems. Oh, my God. Thank you for having me. I can't even, I can't even, uh, in all seriousness, stress what an honor this is. And I really hope I don't let you guys down. Oh, oh you, no you, way the you definitely says, haven't oh, seen the show before. Yeah. It's impossible. I want to be focused. <laughs> I want to just be into the. You, you're bringing too much energy. Oh, no. No, what? bring her back. Bring her back. Run. <laughs> no, 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 at least no. I was gonna say, if she puts this ring on, it disappears. It I will disappear. forever. <laughs> at least we, anyway. we can figure something out and make this happen yeah. next week. <laughs> oh, uh, the technology. Can you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of funnies in review. Every week we review two different franchise movies and we rank them against the franchise themselves. On Tuesdays, we're doing Kevin Smith's View Us Universe in review. And now for the next six weeks on Fridays, we're going to be doing Lord of the Rings uh, extended editions. And we're split putting them into two parts per movie based on where the Blu-ray splits them in half. I didn't realize these movies were Titanic style, like two movie adventures. I didn't know they even did that with Blu-rays. Yeah, but I didn't they either. Do. That's crazy. It's impressive. It's real it, it, damn it's impressive. Weird I feel like they could, probably could have fit them both on just one disc. I don't know if they needed to be split up. I don't Surely, know because they have a are... 50 – Blu-rays have a 50 gig limit. And I'm sure it's not like gigs. it's utilizing the second one all the way. But I imagine they needed an extra like fifteen minutes. They couldn't put on the. On the I'll just have to wait for the four K uh, reissue. It's, it's coming, really coming, coming it's eventually. Coming. Anyway, so we're going to be today. We're doing Fellowship of the Ring Part One, which ends uh, one two hours and forty four. Sorry, one hour and forty five minutes in to this adventure. Um, I want to give a very shout out to everybody that's watching live on Twitch right now. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You can watch the show live every week. If you want to watch it later, you can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. If you want to listen to it, that's cool. You can go to your favorite podcast service and search for kind of funny reviews and we'll be there too. If you want to get the show ad free, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny. And if you want to uh, leave your review in haiku form, you can also go to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like our Patreon producers did. Muhammad Muhammad, Cameron Reagan, Steve Powers, Lee Palero, Julian the Gluten-Free Gamer, Kieran O'Donnell, Drew Garnier, and Al Tribesman. We appreciate you all very, very much. Today, we're talking about Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, Part 1, released December 19th, 2001, directed by Peter Jackson would go on to direct all of the Lord of the Rings movies, the Hobbit trilogy, King Kong in 2005, and most recently, Mortal Engines. Didn't you guys see Mortal Engines? No. no. Uh, I I own it on 4K Blu-ray. Really? (laughs) Paula really likes it. I don't know why. It's it's not a great movie. It's not... No, it's bad. But we have it. So if anybody wants to watch it, I think it's on the Voodoo account. He is the third highest grossing film director of all time. His films have made over $6.5 billion worldwide. Uh, this one had a budget of $93 million and had a box office of $887.8 million, making it the second highest grossing film in 2001 and the fifth highest grossing film of all time at the time of its release. Um, a runtime of the entire part or an entire Fellowship of the Ring is three hours and 28 minutes without credits. <laughs> So the credits are so long. I, I so did long. not, I didn't expect that at the end of the second disc because I ended up watching both of them before we made this change, and I saw there's still 36 minutes left or 30 whatever. Like there's where is this gonna end? I don't remember this going on for that much longer. And then like sure enough, the credits hit and there's there's a lot of them unless they're just really slow. I didn't really so watch them. The, the credits, even the extended version has extended credits. <laughs> so oh, there good. was there was something where. Um, you could support making the extended edition or whatever, and, and oh. like if you pre-ordered or something, you you got your name in the credits, like so Patreon people, like exactly, and it uh, lasts okay. like ten thousand years, and you see Al yeah. Tribesman, you see Gagne Fructis, all yeah. that stuff. Um, so here's the deal, guys. We were talking about Lord of the Rings. How are we feeling about this, Elise? What are your thoughts? 
Um, super excited to be here. So such an avid part of the Lord of the Rings culture in my day-to-day -day life every day. I'm part of a, a meme group with friends, Lord of the Memes, where every day we're sending each other memes. It's a, it's a part of my life on a daily scale, and I'm nervous because I want to make sure I do it justice with you guys. I, I'm so fearful that I'll be in the moment and I'll forget a specific you know, <laughs> name, name of something or term or, or moment. So I just want to be on my I'd A game. I, I'm just going to have the IMDb up the whole time because surely I'll forget an actor's name or whatever. But That's smart. like when it comes to the to the first half of this disc, Elise, obviously you've seen this movie a million times. So have I. But when it comes to the extended edition, I am not so uh, I'm kind of a novice when it comes to the extended editions. Yeah, I'd learn, say I'm going to learn a lot together. Here. I'm more versed in the Two Towers and Return of the King extended editions than I am of Fellowship. So here's the deal. Um, Kebabs in the chat did something utterly insane. He says, so here's the thing. This is a gigantic thing. I wanted no expense spared when it came to the future Lord of the Rings in review series. There's so many cool facts and stories around this legendary trilogy that I love so dearly. So I went all in. I made a document that's 27 pages of facts, stats, information, and tales from the Lord of the Rings movies, as well as pertinent info from the book, plus differences between the films and book, plus differences between the extended edition and the theatrical releases, because I'm that crazy. I also did it for all the Hobbit movies as well. This is a document that I will link in the description that you guys can check out. These movies are denser than any movies we've ever done in this series, and like we're going to have a bunch of facts, but if you want an insane amount of facts... Go to the description. Check this out. He made a very pretty PDF. It's ridiculous. Um, Great job, so yeah, if, if you want to get into that stuff, that'll all be there. Um, but before we get into plot and everything, guys, where, where are we at with this? Because I know it's been a long time in the making of us doing this interview series. Kevin, um, let's I, start with you. Okay. okay. Uh, I really enjoy these movies. I'm excited to talk about them. Of course, we've got the long going, like running joke thing where we insult this series. But I mean, it's good. <laughs> It, yeah. They're fun to watch. They're long. God, they're long. But that's but that's the thing for me too, right? Is like I watching these back. Obviously, all jokes aside, I mean, Kevin, Kevin, you and I are gonna have to have a truce on this for the next six weeks. Otherwise, no we're bullshit. Gonna we can make fun up. of it when it's like oh, here's no, we're, another we're shot of them walking. We're gonna make fun of it. Because we're gonna make fun of it, especially when the Hobbit jumps into Gandalf's arms. And you're like, look at how little he is. But oh, we're definitely gonna have some fun with this. But like, all kidding aside, with with the rivalry with the the, the clerks and Lord of the Rings. Um, watching this let's, back, let's reach across the aisle right now, guys. Let's reach across the aisle, everybody. Everybody, thank you, thank there you very very much. Just choose. Um, I got a lot more out of this, I think, watching this the second time because I watched this with subtitles so I can remember, like, get everyone's names because there's a lot of names that are very similar to each other, uh, especially when they get to their dads and it's like Aragorn, son of Arathor. And I'm like, do we just change one letter there? Is that we were a little lazy on that one? <laughs> -R -R. Um, but watching it back, I'm like, uh, this this series is so steeped in lore that if you ju you just have to get into it you have to bury yourself into it and you have to snuggle up to it and once you do um i started really getting i, I really enjoyed watching it. i only watched the first half because i wanted to be fresh for next week so i really enjoyed going in this just kind of haven't seen these movies in probably 10 years um and i was i was i was like pleasantly surprised how fast they went and how much i was enjoying at least getting up to the council yeah, for me, I, I've only seen these movies once, and I watched the extended editions in one weekend, all back to back, and it was a lot. And it, it was one of those things where I'm like, this is really pretty. It's obviously super deep. I, it just goes over my head. Too many names are similar, too much stuff. I'm like, I'm missing out. On, I don't really get this. I was young enough that it was just like my attention wasn't there, you know? So I, I've been really excited to go back to these movies. When we first started doing in review, uh, when we did MCU in review, Gio was like, I'm down to, like, I want to have my, like, my gaps in knowledge filled when it comes to different uh, movies and franchises. And I want to be able to understand these cultural zeitgeist moments. I will watch any franchise you guys do except for Lord of the Rings. She's like, I'm not fucking doing that nerd shit. That's too far. That's a bridge. I will not cross. Understand. And the reason for that is similar to me. We both just don't really like this type of high fantasy stuff. Like it really is just not my, my vibe at all. But long story short, she was like, fuck it. I'm not letting you watch this without me. Like, I'm, I'm going to do this. And I cannot believe I'm saying that both me and her, and she's the bigger surprise, really enjoyed watching this. Like, she was sitting there and was paying attention the entire time and was like, she's excited to keep going. And I'm feeling the exact same way where it's just like, this is, it's, it's dense. 
there's a lot and a lot of the complaints that I had before are still still there, but having subtitles on and really kind of just being fully engrossed in it. I love how much these movies commit. Like these films are are I can't believe they exist. Like it's I, kind of just like wow, they really the took these right books now. and were like yeah. we're making this a, a thing that is we're going all out and we're going to make sure that it's as nerdy as fucking possible because that's what this has to be. It wouldn't work if it was any less production value. And my God, it works. Yeah. Right. And you, and you have emotional to... right now. Oh my God. Hey, did it. PJ. <laughs> PJ. Right. PJ. 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 He made the movie. Oh, I, I thought you were pointing to James. I was like, did James <laughs> make the Lord of the Rings? Did I not know this about him? I, I, that makes me so happy to hear it, Tim. It makes me, I'm thrilled right now. Um, I, I was really worried watch like when we sort of committed to watching the extended editions because I know I'm glad we're out we are splitting them up I think that is ultimately the smarter decision just because I know that they it's a commitment and uh, I, I think the theatrical versions are more easily digestible but this is like my first time watching uh, fellowship recently that's extended uh, uh, the extended version. And for someone like me who loves these movies, and I've seen I've seen the theatrical versions dozens and dozens of times, but um, I just got so much out of the more backstory. Um, I, I think character moments are made a lot more impactful because you see interactions between people more and more, and you start to really feel for them. I like I am I am just these movies are miracles, man. Like they. The fact that these movies happened and are really damn good. It it, it really reminds me of somebody was talking about the original Star Wars trilogies and how we haven't really felt that way about Star Wars since them. Like, you know, like sure, there have been some good movies here and there Star Wars wise, but. But when it comes to the to the OG trilogy, some people have called said, like, what if it was just a fluke? Like. What if three movies were made and like it was just lucky that they're so good and to make new ones that are just as good is impossible. And I feel like with Lord of the Rings, it's just like they hit the nail perfectly. Three out of three. It's funny. And maybe and maybe that's why The Hobbit just isn't as good to us, because it's like, how are these movies so good? And how did they? Well, no, the Hobbits, the Hobbits are bad. I mean, like, that's the same thing. It's interesting to make that analogy because the the three prequels that came out years later suffer i think from the same thing where it's like there's not as much substance and they're the yeah. stories are kind of thinned out some well, of the visual stuff they're doing is experimental and cool certainly when the prequels came out for star wars there were like all like green screen scenes like yeah. that weren't a thing and they both had trouble like yeah. really really bad yeah. development cycles and a lot of issues to that point though people point to the hobbit and they say well it's plagued by development issues you know Guillermo del Toro was attached. He's no longer attached. They had, you know, they they were going to do the White Orc as a as a person. They got moved to see like all these things beleaguered that production. Lord of the Rings faced those same things. If you look back at it, you know, you have two, Stuart Townsend being swapped for Viggo Mortensen. You've got Peter oh. Jackson pitched it to two studios before Lionsgate said yes we'll make this movie and they were even pitching it down they were pitching it as like two movies because they didn't think anybody would take a chance on a trilogy so i think to what you're saying andy it's a i do think there is a certain element of fluke perfect storm the talent the recipe for talent and just the industry being where it was it was all all a great cataclysm of these things coming together and working which doesn't usually happen to to you tim too i think that you know, I don't want people to kind of like criticize you guys because I do really love that everyone's rewatching it and thinking like, oh, I'm getting something out of these movies. And I will say uh, for the people that are going to criticize you, I was there, too. I was a skeptic. I did not see <laughs> Fellowship in theaters um, because at the time it was 2001 and Fellowship comes out. And you'll remember another movie coming out that year, Pearl Harbor. And yeah. I was I was so uh more important to tired do. <laughs> of <laughs> bloat and poor delivery on you know story <laughs> and, and, experience. and and I was like I was over it I to me I, I looked because I didn't know the books so I looked at uh, fellowship at face value and I went this is some blockbuster you know that's trying to give me an epic I'm, and I'm it'll so fail. Over it. it's good yeah, yeah. It'll, it's 
I didn't. It wasn't until Two Towers that I was like, "This is this is art. This is a masterpiece." Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I I was watching the uh, sort of the making of, and I loved how Peter Jackson. They're telling the story about Peter Jackson pitching it to the to the studios, and that they went to like Miramax and they went to all these people that were trying to just get it into one movie, and yeah. they were like, "Man, we're failing, we're failing," and they took it a new line. They're like, "We'd like to make this two movie series," and they're like, "No, we can't." Uh, uh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. Sorry, at least I'm just zoning <laughs> no, out. I'm just so excited. I'm, I'm like, I but then, yeah, so he takes it to the new line, and they're like, "Yeah, we can't do two movies. This has to be three. And they're like, "Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me?" And then, so like, they're like, "Immediately, let's sign this right now." And like, it's just, it's so awesome. Yeah, what's what's crazy to me is like, oh, Tim, Tim, uh, Tim Gettys, Gettys, kind of funny. Tim Gettys, go ahead. Uh, ignorant question here. So, were these three books? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. So yeah. how the fuck would well, they like, we're make well, two movies? And well, here, this is my point, right? Is that the reason why I think these work so well is the same reason why the hobbits fail is that the source material for Lord of the Rings was so strong. And the fact that they were three books, they were, they were classics by this time. Um, and you have all of this great lore that J.R.R.L. Tolkien uh, wrote into it. Then you get to The Hobbit. And of course, a lot of people, this is the thing that people argue back and forth. They're like, oh, he wrote all this stuff and he did the Cimmerillion and all this crap. And like The Hobbit was a small book that should have been one movie. And it should have been a prequel to these. And it would have been really, really cool to see. But they decided that it was, to me, they got greedy. And they were like, we should make these three movies. And fans want them. And they'll go see them. And it just, it just was so thin as far as the story. Because you don't have these well-fleshed out characters. You don't have all the backstory and the lore for them. Um, really... The Hobbit should have been all about fun and adventure and it should have been in and out. Whereas with these, it's so it's so interesting. You guys are and you're hitting the nail on the head where it is that nice, that perfect storm of great source material, a, a director that legitimately is such a nerd for this stuff and is Dude, so passionate every about all stuff. of the production crew are like we've read these books thousands yep. of times and, then, like, I mean, and that's the thing and and actors who were so into it they went out and got tattoos to commemorate yep. their roles as the nine fellows people. What's that? Not a, what's his name? John Reese davies Oh, did he not do it? His stunt Who's double. Did? Gimli. Oh. Yeah. John Reese davies stunt double, dude. Maybe he's got, just, maybe just he's to be in the, just to be in the group photo. <laughs> like he's yeah. like looking um, down. <laughs> uh, man, so, if, you, if you can't keep track of the characters in Lord of the Rings, Try keeping track of all those fucking dwarves in The Hobbit. Yeah. I don't well, know. The problem, right, is you can't, like, the Lord of the Rings to me is easy because eventually it whittles down to, like, the two different um, spoilers for future. But, like, the Fellowship is the Fellowship, but eventually it starts whittling down to the, the two story, uh, uh, basically story points of, like, yeah. Hobbit and Sam and then the rest of them. And so you kind of get to, but you also get to know these characters and th there is a heart to this and a story, uh, a character arc to a lot of this stuff is specifically with Sam and with, uh, with Frodo and their relationship and how they have this bane that they have to carry and this cross to bear. And that just, that right there to me is not what the Hobbit was about. We're, but we're, we're getting off track. Sorry. We, we have a, I could talk one, about that. one last thing that like, I just want to just tiny bit going off track. I really hope the Amazon show is good. I <sighs> really, cause like there's so much lore missing from these movies that the Amazon show could really like add to that would be incredible but we'll, we'll see how that goes <laughs> yeah peter jackson talked about tom bombadil was like like yeah we would have loved to have added that but that doesn't really further along the plot really of like bilbo's story but it's also know? it's also an unnecessary plot like plot interruption or complication that would have caused i think in my opinion more questions than it would have answered because when you have tom bombadil who is this like unbelievably powerful being who was like the ultimate you know protector of his domain the question starts rising like why don't you just have him go fight sauron yeah <laughs> you don't want you don't want that. to include his songs it's just kind of like unnecessary pleasantries that yeah. divert from the actual plot and to, and to that point too i think the songs it, it, there's a lot of like songs missing from this because they sing constantly in the book which was my most annoying part because i was like i don't know what the melody is to this stupid song i don't know what the hell they're talking about i'm glad they cut that down well, like, to be clear to be clear you read these books, right, Nick? Yeah, I read all of them. Like, is, does that impress anyone else? I, it I, I love mind. it. I only I only read Fellowship. Like I was uh, of I was of the mind that like I read Fellowship and I wasn't super huge into this franchise at all. Like when the movie when Fellowship I didn't watch Fellowship in theaters either. Um, up until when Two Towers is coming out, that's when I finally watched Fellowship, and then I absolutely fell in love. And then like Call like the end of high school going into college was just like all we would do was play World of Warcraft with Lord of the Rings on in the background. Naturally. And like it was just such a part of my life for like four years straight where TNT was always showing the trilogy. 
And like that's that's just kind of it's such a big part of my youth. Did that's did nobody the, have to read it for school? Like the Hobbit? Yeah, fellowship. No, not I the, Hobbit. the Hobbit. Never had to. Oh, yeah. No, Only fellowship. Not, I, I weirdly, um, in a weird way, like I, I don't really read ever, and for whatever reason, <laughs> I, I saw a poster for Lord Stop of the Rings, and, and I heard <laughs> talking about it, and they were like, "Oh yeah, this is a classic book series." And I'm like, "I've literally never heard of this before," and I think this was like back in when, when did the first one come out? 2001? Is that what when you said? Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. came out. Yes. The same year. <laughs> uh, I remember. I think I was a junior or a senior. Yeah, I was junior in college at that point. And I was walking through the UC Irvine book the library and I saw the book and, and it had the like it had like the the original cover on it. But then there was a poster for the movie and I was like, oh, I should read this book before the movie comes out, which was the worst idea <laughs> because I finished it at least. I shit you not. I finished the first book the night before I went and saw Lord of the Rings at uh, Newport, at Big Edwards in Newport, or the, the big screen in Newport Beach. Big E. And I was so bored when I watched oh. it because it's such a faithful reproduction. I'm like, I just, just finished this that. story. Then, <laughs> listen, this is how stupid a 21-year-old Nick Scarpino was. I was like, I did not learn my lesson. So I did the same thing for <laughs> – uh, two Towers and Return of the King. I was I just kept finishing the book the night before the movie. I'm like, Why am I doing this to myself? I, mean, I imagine you cannot say that when it comes to the spectacle of Helm's Deep. Like you can't say like, oh yeah, I'm bored watching this visualized. I I just think that the stories didn't. I I so when future I read spoilers, the book, future spoilers. Yeah, future spoilers. so that's the thing. At least we don't do future spoilers on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nobody, yeah, nobody. I, we don't we know don't what happens in the future, guys. We don't know what. The, <laughs> but I, I what I do want to say is that they mentioned in the making of that. Uh, it's crazy that you didn't hear about this book, Nick, because they mentioned that uh, several years after the trilogy was written by Tolkien, that it was the second most read book to the Bible. <laughs> oh, that yeah, is, I mean, that's like without a, a doubt, it was the most that's popular sci-fi book, or, you know, high like fantasy book how, ever. I would like to see how Harry Potter knocked that thing off the throne. I'll just say it that way. There's probably oh, yeah. a three-way tie right now between... Lord of the Rings, the Bible, and Deathly Hallows. <laughs> um, so, but no, for, for me, watching like this the, one for the first time, uh, like pretty much for the first time, like going into these movies, it's just like I've seen them, like I said once, but it's like it, nothing, nothing stuck with me. Yeah, and especially with these extended ones being as dense as they are, like I'm just gonna fucking say it: the Hobbits are probably gonna end up being my least favorite part of these movies, and for them to be so the focus of so much of this. I was like, I don't know, man. I really don't know if I'm going to be down with. There's too many of them. It's just like, okay, Frodo, I can. Four. It's Elijah Wood. I got that. But it's like, okay, there's four. But I'm like, I feel like two but, would be okay with. Yeah, but there could on, be let, three. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. So it's like watching all this. I feel immediately. I was like, this is why I don't like these things. But then they start developing those characters. You see them interact together. I'm like. Okay, okay. I feel like it's a weird thing where the extended edition allows these characters to become things I like in yeah. spite of me being like, I don't want to like this. So then by the time we get to freaking uh, uh, Riverdale, 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 Riverdale. <laughs> we get enough. to Riverdale and it's like, we get there and then they're like, okay, now we got the fucking arrow guy and the sword guy and the fucking this guy. I'm just like, mm -hmm. I fucking the earned this guy. and this is awesome. And oh, then I'm yeah. like, then the little Hobbit motherfucker comes out and he's just like, like, I'm gonna fucking take the ring. I'm like, damn right you are. Cause you're my boy. It's just like, how did you win me over this much? On these <laughs> and we'll, talk, honestly, we'll talk about it. But when Sam steps up there and he says, you ain't going nowhere without me. Oh my God. Oh. Dude, I will, I will say to that point, Tim, I was actually, I was dreading watching the extended versions of these. Cause it takes me so long to do the plot synopsis. Cause I want to like for, specifically for this. I was like, I want to make sure I get everyone's names. Right. And just don't call him Sean Bean the entire time. Um, <laughs> But you're right. There's something about knowing that, hey, listen, we're going to hunker down for four hours and and you just you just sort of like melt into the material and you you have to have patience with it. But once you do, that extended version does kind of fill in some gaps and it lulls you into the story a little bit more uh, than I think the theatrical cut did. Of course, I haven't finished this movie yet, nor have I finished the other 19 hours of the next two movies. But uh but we'll see. I, I think I'm going to feel the same. Sorry, James just walked by and it totally distracted me. I know. It's like, I, I think we're all right now. <laughs> That's the cool thing for me watching this, though, is like that moment happens and like they're all joined him together and it's like hype as fuck. They're like, and for me, the part one ended. 
that could have been the end of this movie and it would have felt like a complete movie. Mm -hmm. Like we had an action scene like climax. We had all this stuff. And I'm just like, how the fuck is there half this movie left? Like that's insane to me. If they made that movie now, they would have made it six parts. This (laughs) would have been six movies. And I, it would have been good because they could have probably added 15 more minutes to this movie, like more action stuff with Arwen and like the, the ring rates. And they could have made it two hours. I'd have been like, dope. I'm in for the next one. But no, man, we got a lot more of this movie. Is there a giant spider that it comes in this one? Maybe. Hey, come on. Hey, Dude, Nick, it's so Nick. simple to not Nick, spoil You're so things. bad at <laughs> not doing the spoiler. Uh, really <laughs> quick, I uh, I looked up the most popular books of all time. And it, Lord Harry of the Potter. Rings, Lord of the Rings is number seven. Harry Potter, number five. So you know what, I mean? what, what are the other ones? So like, uh, the Bible. Yeah, the, the, Bible the, the Holy the Quran is number one. The Bible is number two. Then quotations from Chairman Mao. Natural. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. And number four Probably. is Don Quixote, which seems like uh-huh. a mistake. Where's the Count of Monte Cristo on that? <laughs> we'll dream that possible dream. Where's Monster House? Goose no. Goose number one. <laughs> no, the Count, the Count of Monte Cristo is not on here. But number nine is tied with four books, one of them being The Hobbit. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the plot. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. Lord of the Rings. The extra long version, the Fellowship <laughs> of the Ring. Keep it secret. Keep, Keep it safe. safe. Oh, the world <laughs> is changing. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air, and I taste it in the Takis, Andy. Uh-huh. Most that once was, was lost. For now, uh, for none who now who live, remember it. And I'll tell you right now, if you're starting your movie off with a voiceover from one Kate Blanchett, Give them the Academy Award right now. <laughs> Give them the Academy Award or 11, whatever it is. We get and the title screen, Lord of the Rings, it, and the music is it, hot fire here. If I may just tell you, Kate Blanchett wasn't the original choice to record that VO. Who do they want, Gandalf? Like they, like, I Colin. think Ian McKellen did it at one point. Somebody else did it. And then they were like, yeah, Kate Blanchett. Well, it's interesting because I don't, I don't know. I, can't, I haven't finished the movie yet, so I can't remember if her character pops up in this. But man, Kate Blanchett is just... First off, the woman never ages, and I'm okay with that. Whatever, I was, whatever what, what's up with that? Doing, I want. I was it. I want telling. It. I was telling Nick, like you know, she looks the same here that she does in Thor Ragnarok, and they are filmed 16 years apart. Like that's She's a perfect that's insane. Game. Great for uh, her. She just, she just got me, cast as um, Lilith in Borderlands. In Borderlands, a movie. Yeah. yeah, and and people are they're saying ageism, and I'm like, you're a sexist shitbag. She looks amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck you all. Um, speaking of like, the Academy yeah, Awards yeah. here, Nick. Uh, the film received numerous accolades at the 74th Academy Awards. It was nominated for 13 awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Supporting Actor uh, for Ian McKellen, Best Art Direction, Best Costume Design, Best Film Editing, Best Original Song for May It Be, and Best Sound. And it won four Best Cinematography, Best Makeup, Best Original Score, and Best Visual Effects. I'm just, I, I pointed out here that we get the title sequence of Lord of the Rings, right? The Fellowship of the Ring. And we see the ring, and there's fire in the background, and it's that. It's that classic Lord of the Rings theme, and it's so good. And it just immediately tells you, you are in for a deep, dark adventure right now. Shit's going down. Shit is going down. And then, of course, you get the rest of the video. It began with the forging of the Great Rings. Three to the Elf King, seven to the Dwarves, nine to uh, to the the men uh, who, above all, desire power and cool cars. Uh, Each ring Mm -hmm. gave people the strength and the will to govern each race, of course. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Joke's on you, especially if you're a human king, because the Dark Lord Sauron over on Mountain Doom has made it Master Ring. One ring to rule them all Sorry. but we fought back of course yeah how, how messed up how pissed would you be andy if i was like andy i got this cool ring for you and then you put it on and now i can control your right hand and whatever it wants oh, to do and no. you're midway is, so you're almost getting wait, that killing is that what the ring, the ring does off. i don't know <laughs> the guys. ring like oh he can no he, uh, he like it allows you to manipulate their minds <laughs> it's yes, not idle it, hands it makes, them, it makes them slaves to you yeah. of course but yeah. one uh, thing that i've always had a question about the ring now doesn't have any power like it, other than it convincing you to make power. you like Sauron's slave, right? No, it so so they. It, well, I'm, I'm sorry, it makes you see through. Nuanced. A lot of this is nuanced, but yeah, the ring itself, from my understanding, and Elise, of course, you, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but the ring is sort of it. It gives people power, but ultimately, its whole its sole purpose is to make its way back to Sauron. But, so yeah, it has but, kind of a mind of its own. But my question, it Sauron, he can control everything. But my question is, what power does it give you? Because it doesn't seem like it gives anyone actually powers no, other than visibility. It, because because when they, they explain that when it was destroyed, 
basically it's it is Sauron. Yeah. It is it was it is imbued with Sauron. So basically, it gives you whatever power it needs to give you. Basically, the the, the visibility to have the hold on you to then manipulate its way back to getting into. Sauron's so it hand. it doesn't really other than making you invisible. You don't have power to control any of the other rings, mm-hmm. no. Because if you did, he put it on be able to control the ring ray. It's yeah. that'd be dope. Shit. So it's just it's so but, interesting that everyone and I understand that it's the weakness of men, but like the, the, all the the guys are like oh. No, 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 I'm going to use it for stuff. And it's like, well, but because it no... has ultimately above all, it has the power to corrupt men's it's minds. It's seducing, and yeah. Sure, and that's sure, what, that's sure. That's what it does. I mean, to be fair, like that, I mean, that's that's the whole point of the story, right? And and to Tim's point, like where he's like, don't, what, what are with these stupid hobbits? The hobbits are the only ones that can bear the bane because they it's don't have so that weak. desire for power. Yeah. They, yeah, they're weak. They don't, they're, they're, they're these so pure little creatures who just want to stay on their own, which yeah. is why this adventure is so fun because you take that character and you throw him into a place that he does not belong. He's, they're not warriors. Mm. And that's why it's so funny. Ian McKellen, there's a part coming up where he just nails it. Where Frodo offers him the ring, mm. and you see it in his eyes that that like immediate thirst for power, like it's a drug, and he's like, "Get that thing the yeah. fuck away from me! I cannot well, yeah. touch it." And Isildur is like, terrible things. Isildur is like the original template for the ring corrupting the minds of men, and the ring right. betraying. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's pursuit to return to Sauron, like you know, his death, and of course, right. Elrond telling him to destroy it, and him Ugh, not you know, <laughs> turning yeah. around right there. Why didn't Elrond beat his ass right there and take uh, it? Just- he could have. I will never forget my 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 good friend uh, CP when we were in high school. Like at that moment, he's like, if the, if he just fucking threw the ring in the fire, we, we don't have we wouldn't have to read this shit. <laughs> it's like this wasn't history. <laughs> this isn't like world history. <laughs> uh, getting back to the plot, of course, we get uh, we get the great scene where we fought back, of course, and killed all the orcs until Sauron, uh, all the men, all the armies of the elves and the men and and the dwarves, we all banded together to fight back, and we started killing the shit out of thing until Super Sauron came. And just started knocking humans around like their children. At, at which point, I would a hundred percent, a hundred percent bow down to this guy as my king. I'd be like, you cannot be him. Lord Sauron, all hail Lord you deserve Sauron. It, yeah. all right, you got this, big God. Guy. I can imagine that so clearly in my mind of Nick just being like, I, "Nope, I, yeah, I, I, what do you need me to do? In, what do you need me to do?" He's twice as tall as everyone else, and he's got a club. It's not a sword. It's like a club, yeah. and he's just walking around. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, he's like a dad, and everyone else is like his kids. Um, and, of course, everyone uh, is, is terrified by this guy, except for uh, Isuldor's dad, who was the king at the time. Uh, and he goes to try to kill him, and he dies. Uh, so, but then his son takes the, 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 the shards of his broken sword and takes one final hack at Sauron, of course, and cutting off his fingers and the ring with it. Uh, the ring falls to the ground and destroys Sauron, defeating his power. Uh, and then we get it. The ring passes to Isildur, who had his one chance to destroy the thing forever. But let's be honest, you wouldn't either. Think about how many subscribers, Tim, we could get to our channel if we had that fucking ring. Yeah, it's it. so cool the way it shrinks when he grabs it. So oh, it I love that. Perfectly, yeah. and it's like oh, it shows the manipulative power of this ring because it's going to do it's what it perfect needs for to you. Do the wearer. Yeah, but I love uh, that because I was immediately thinking I was like, how the f- it's too big. There's no way. and then seeing them do that, I was like, all right, cool. Like you're yeah. already answering my dumbass moral <laughs> questions. Yeah, Can but I of just course, say yes. Th- this battle that kicks off the beginning of this movie, that's like, that could be the epic final battle, uh, you know, of any movie. But they're so, like, no, nah, this is just backstory. Yeah. We're gonna, we're yeah it's, coordinate. So it's so you fun know? to start that way and be like, oh my God, this is what they had to do to try to beat this guy. And even that didn't beat him forever. That's terrifying. Well, I also want, I want to just like shout out the, the, the idea that yes, they're giving you all this lore and this like sort of prologue, like introduction or whatever. But like for someone like me who like my brains at in a million different places at any given moment, like for them to boil down all of this dialogue and story so like simply succinctly. and succinctly and just say like, yeah. here's what's happening. And it's really easy to understand. Like I, I, it, it's I just mean, every, it's so efficient. You know what I mean? Dude, we just spent the last, what was it 18 weeks watching transformers movies and every single movie started with optimus prime doing vo some cg backstory of what's happening to set the story and none of those made sense no. this is to so much fair, better Tim, to be fair this- the, the source material is a lot stronger here than it was for yeah. part, the cartoon also, of the transformers <laughs> again we already established they did not have maybe, a- maybe more apt comparison would be like harry potter and the deathly hallows when they have the um 
stop motion or like I think oh, yeah. Yeah. Made it, they explain the Deathly yeah. Hallows. I, love I always that. point to that as a scene that I really like that yeah. does backstory really well. That was yeah. such a great, that was such a smart call too, the way they did that. Um, anyway, back to this. Uh, but guess what, guys? The ring, it's no fool. It betrayed Isildur to his death. Uh, we get a great scene where he's he's like, I got the ring, I'm gonna beat everyone up, and then he just ends up with arrows in his back floating down the river. And some things that should not have been forgotten were lost. For 2,500 years, the ring passed oh, out of cool all knowledge line. until it ensnarled, uh, ensnared, excuse me, the creature Gollum, who took it deep into the tunnels of the Misty Mountains, uh, where it consumed him and turned him into an old, bald Italian man. He looks exactly <laughs> like my dad. It's true. <laughs> For 500 years, it poisoned his mind uh, as it whisper, uh, as whispers of a nameless fear were rising, so the ring abandoned Gollum. Uh, but then something weird happened that the ring didn't intend. It was picked up by a hobbit. Bilbo Baggins of the Shire, whose hair looks a lot like Tim's when he's going to get his hair cut. Uh, the time... I will say, I will say, I do want to interrupt really quickly because it kind of confused me where we, uh, future spoilers with like Gollum and stuff and his transformation or whatever, but it felt like when he discovered the ring, he was already Gollum here. Where, no, yeah, there was that like, moment where he like goes into it, right? Like, I guess, like, the voice and something when he first discovers the ring, it felt like he had already been Gollum for 500 years here. Yeah. And then later on, you see the Smeagol to Gollum transformation, and that that's always kind of confused me. I feel like it was kind of an oversight, like, hey, you guys get it. You guys, get I, it. I, I've always felt like we, we get a moment later in this where, uh, where he they're taking the the Frodo's taking the rim from Bill, or no, Frodo has the ring on. And Bilbo's like, let me see it. And then we get that yeah. little gl glimpse of his yeah, face yeah. transforming. And I just always felt like that's the same thing that was happening right there to Gollum. Yeah, where sure. It was yeah. like, just for a moment, it completely took over him. You know? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. Also, uh, river folk different from hobbits. That just feels like an unnecessary, like, you know, difficulty. Well, everyone hates the river folk. Let's be perfectly honest. Well, they're gone. Living back then, living in the Shire. By the by, the time when when we catch up with them, the the river folk are no longer a thing. Now it's just hobbits. There it is. Uh, the time will soon come when hobbits will shape the fortune of all. And we flash forward to the twenty second of September, fourteen hundred. We look at a map of the Shire. We see Bag End. We see Hobbit Town. We see Middle Earth. It's all a little bit confusing, but it's the third age of this world, and so we're starting to get a lot of that backstory and a lot of education on what's happening here. Then we catch up with old Bilbo Baggins' house in Bag, uh, which is called his house is Bag End, right? Mm -hmm. That's the name of his house in the Shire in Hobbit Town. Is that the correct way to do it, or is it Hobbit Town? Is the Shire the, is the Shire the county and Hobbiton is the city the of state San or something? <laughs> I don't know how this works. Uh, anyway, there and back again. Where to begin? He's trying to write his book. Ah, yes. Let's tell the audience what a Hobbit is, so they don't know it's a town. So they don't think it's a town of small Italian farmers who eat a lot and have a really hairy feet, like my uncle Lou. Uh, Hobbits like food, booze, and weed, son. Oh, and. <laughs> I think Cool Greg would get along with these small people very, very, very well. Uh, Bilbo got a knock at the door from Frodo, but Frodo is nowhere to be found uh, to answer it. Instead, a young boy is out, the young boy is out in the forest waiting to hug a very old wizard, Gandalf. Uh, when he spots Gandalf coming down the road in his cool little old man cart, he jumps into the old man's arms and they fake laugh and they fake laugh. And Tim, you know how much I love fake laughing in movies. Dude, I, I can't deal with Elijah Wood in this movie. <laughs> like, I hate so I much. Him, I'm just like, what was your direction to just have fun? Like that's yeah. it. Just have fun, Elijah. Just so have pure. fun. I, yeah. I think here were the two. Here were the two directions. Be be uh, innocent and flirt a little bit with everyone with your just eyes. A little, bit, just a little bit. <laughs> just flirt a little bit with everyone. Well, he always seems like he's got a secret. Yeah. You know, he's I telling everyone else to eat their secrets, yeah. but then he looks like he's got a secret. Yeah, he, I think we all know what his secret is. Uh, <laughs> and his uh, ring, right? He's got the ring. Yeah. Got the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Head of the gutter. Uh, Gandalf came back for Bilbo's B day. It's his 111th B day, and man, this one's going to be a banger. Uh, Frodo tells Gandalf that Bilbo, uh, Bilbo has been a bit off recently, and we get a scene where Bilbo can't find his ring. He panics until he finds it in his vest pocket. And I love all this stuff too. Uh, we get. I, a wanted, little... I, I wanted somebody make, to make a meme of like where I am Frodo and Greg Miller is Gandalf, and it's like how Greg would let me hang out with him before I joined. Kind of funny. And then when all the kids come up to say hi, like that's them yelling beyond with the fireworks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if someone could like sort of like, you know, film that out and make that an after You effect. fantasized about that this for like years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, course, yeah, I get, to cool. I get to hang out with him. Like he's the cool guy, you know? 
as they're riding into town, we give a little reference to the adventures of the Hobbit because the old people shoot Gandalf right looks. Uh, they the all the old people think he uh, they hate him because he disturbed the peace back in the day, but the kids love him uh, because he brings firecrackers and candy and a cool van. Uh, when Gandalf arrives at Bilbo's, <laughs> at Bilbo's, he notes that despite being 111 years old, Bilbo has not aged a day, and we all know curious. why. Damn, I'm curious. very curious. Well, Gandalf knows why. Yeah. Bilbo uh, knows why. And then we get one of what I think is just one of the most fun effects in the entire movie is that Gandalf comes into the into the Hobbit's house and we finally get a sense of scale and he's just bumping his head on literally everything because the house is built for people. Which, to oh, oh, go I, for it. I, I, no, you know. go. You know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fun the fun fact here is that was uh, an accident. He hit his head. Didn't mean to, and he just acted it off. It's yeah, kind of like we'll keep oh, yeah. it. Django Unchained. You know, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. Keep there it. Keep that scene in. in. Keep it. Keep it in. Yeah, there you uh, go. Uh, let's see. Bilbo wants to see the mountains one more time when we find uh, and find some peace and quiet to finish his book and then ascend to Elf Heaven, where everyone looks like Kate Blanchett. Sign me up. That night, the party is on in full effect. We meet Samwise Gamgee, who is in love with Rose, uh, as well as Pippin and Mary, who uh, would go on to die in Lost. Remember that? Uh, not Penny's boat. Great moment. Yeah. Uh, Bilbo and Frodo have a nice moment where Bilbo tells Frodo he's. Uh, he'll be uh, all right. And Frodo's like, are you dying of cancer? What the fuck is happening with you? Like, what's up? Uh, and then Mary and Pippin blow up a tent with Gandalf's fireworks. So Gandalf makes them do dishes while Bilbo gives a speech. Uh, he tells the audience uh, that he has stuff to do, man. He's he's put this off for long enough. He bids them all a fond farewell and then, boom, disappears before their eyes. And I have to imagine that if Kevin had the ring. What a fucking cool party all trick. The time. Speech from Bilbo. All the time. I mean, you have to uh, save it, though. You can't just use it whenever. Otherwise, it's like, oh, he disappeared again because that's what he does every once in a while. They you know? also, the, 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 the ring, we would abuse this feature all the time. Oh, we yeah, the, the ring would have corrupted you time. so quick. I would I be think, in by Tim's desk every day before he arrived, just completely right. invisible. You would oh be God. sitting in yeah, my chair. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Sit on you. And he'd be like, oops. Yeah. <laughs> and pull the ring out. Ooh. Did you not see me? Ooh. They uh, added the uh, they added the the dragon fireworks scene, I believe. Uh, that's just like something that they they wanted to have uh, like to show. That, they wanted, that's in the original. No, like yeah, in, in the books. It, no, from oh, the oh, books though. Okay. Like the like they wanted to show so Mary and Pippin's personality and show like They're how mischievous dicks. and silly they are, you know. And so they yeah. that's something that they added where they accidentally liked the thing. And you know. they do a lot in this movie to establish like Pippin and Mary as these troublemakers that are constant. You know, the when they start the fire to cook. Uh, at the campsite when they yeah. when the the helm or whatever falls into into the mines like they do a lot to establish so that way i think it makes you know it doesn't make gandalf seem like a total asshole when later he separates them yeah and it's like okay you you know clearly you can't handle this uh the speech bilbo's speech one of the best moments i don't know half of you as half as well as i should like and i like less than half of you as half as well as you that's, deserve it's like that's 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 the where it found turns. it <laughs> that's awesome. That's definitely the moment at the wedding where the best man is a little too drunk and starts telling stories and shit. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, cut him off, cut him off. Yeah. <laughs> then he disappears. Yeah. Then he just bounces out. Uh, of course, he sneaks back home where he finds Gandalf waiting for him and Gandalf chastises him for misusing the ring. Uh, Bilbo, as it turns out, is leaving everything uh, for Frodo, including the ring, which is in an envelope on the mantle. And then he goes, wait. It's not in the, on the an envelope. It's in my pocket, and this is such a great scene. The, I, I forgot the actor's name that that plays uh, Bilbo, but he does this so well, where he just is Ian like, Holm. Ian Holm. He's just like, oh, that that is Ian Holm from uh, shout out to Ian Holm from uh, Alien, right? Yeah. Doesn't he win that? that it was Pit Ash. Fuck, yep. so good in that. Uh, why shouldn't I keep it? He says, I don't feel like parting with it. It's mine. It came to me, my precious. And then shit gets oh, god. Ugly. As the end is. Gandalf starts using his dad voice, and even I'm like, oh, my God, I'm grounded. Do not take me for some conjurer of cheap, cheap tricks. Oh, it's so oh. cool. Give me that ring, damn it. Uh, of course, Gandalf tells him to let it go, and Bilbo, Bilbo I keep saying Bilbo. But I do, I, do, I do love, like, Gandalf first off saying, like, I've, well, I've heard that before. What do you mean, precious? So what are you talking about? Like, I've heard tales of this before. It's just so damn, like, Ian McKellen is just a master. <laughs> He's yeah. so good, dude. <laughs> um... Why? Oh, he says, uh, uh, Gandalf tells him to let it go. Bilbo agrees and then tries to leave uh, with the ring still in his pocket again. Another another nod to that. Mustering all the strength he can, he drops it on the ground. And this shit doesn't even bounce 
which is terrifying. The it just hits sound the ground, like, was insane. Like I have the surround sound shit and the, the the sub. It was just such a low frequency. That, like I almost shit myself from the, <laughs> the ring hitting the floor. So good. Uh, of course, as he leaves, uh, unlightened from the burden, he finally figures out a good end to his book. Uh, quote, and he lived happily ever after till the end of his days. Uh, Gandalf stares for, and then he leaves. And then we get a great scene where Ian McKellen, again, knocking it out of the park, stares at the ring for a moment. And then he starts getting transfixed by his power as he bends down almost inadvertently, like not controlling himself to pick it up. Uh, as And then as his finger makes, like comes really close to making contact, we see for the first time, what is it, Elise? The Eye of Sauron. That's right. It just flashes for a moment and it gives him that warning of do not pick this thing up yeah. or you will yeah. be a slave to Sauron eventually. Uh, later, this, of yeah, course. This whole, this whole sequence leading up here of like of, of Gandalf eventually doing all this research because he this is like the one thing that he's just absolutely in just there's so much fear attached to this like where he it's he's doing all this research and making sure like wait, there's no yeah. possible way that this, this there's no this way this is the fucking be. ring yeah. like i hope to god this is not the ring and then i love where he eventually like he reads all the script all, all these notes or whatever and then he tells frodo to touch it um you know it's it's cold to the touch or whatever um, but I just think he does such an incredible job of looking at the ring and giving it to Frodo and saying, do you see anything on it? And Frodo goes, no, no. no. And you yeah. see oh, the relief, the re and relief on his head yeah. and his face. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. yes. And Before, then, and then, of course, oh, hang on. Before, of course, all that happens, though, uh, we get a great shot where Gandalf is, like, is is in the foreground and he's staring off into so like trying to figure out what's going on and who should walk into the door is Frodo. And without even thinking, he looks down, and he sees the ring and he just scoops it up. Um, and that's uh, Gandalf tells Frodo that Bilbo, Bilbo has left him everything, including the ring. Uh, and but he's like, I gotta leave, I gotta check on some urgent stuff real quick. And as he turns around with a lot of urgency, he looks at the Hobbit and says, Keep it secret, keep it safe. Uh, and to which I would reply, No, 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 no. I don't know <laughs> what this not thing me, is, bro. <laughs> but I am not your guy right here. Yeah. Again, remember, if I see a 19 foot Sauron coming at me with a club, I am bowing down. I might turn to Tim and just kill God, him. <laughs> He's dead. He's One of the beautiful things in this trilogy is that everyone has this uh, respect and unquestioning faith in Gandalf. The mm. everyone in the you know the trilogy, the, the, all these the, the hobbits and you know Aragorn, they all have so much respect for him that if Gandalf says something, I I think. It. He's just such a great character. Well, again, yeah. he's got all the cool candy in the van. Uh, so he hangs out. We see you get a quick scene with uh, some screaming and stuff by Gollum. Uh, and we see Sauron. I think it's Sauron's fortress of Barad-dur uh, as we hear Gollum screaming in the background. Gandalf then heads over to Minas Tirith uh, to get some answers. And I believe this scene was not in the Shia, original one. Uh, he looks through some old papers and comes across the account of Isildur, who took the ring to keep uh, and pass it along his bloodline uh, to keep and pass along the bloodline, but he, he didn't end up doing that. Uh, the, the writing on the ring has faded, but will come back if you light it on fire, you throw it in the fire, and that's how you know it is the ring. And he's like, shit, we gotta do this. Uh, then we get the first shot on the outskirts of Hobbit Town of a dark writer coming forward Real and he's lost oh, and he asks Real directions he's like where he's like baggins where's the shire and the guy's like oh it's that way and then he goes cool thanks man shire. and then he just leaves baggins. which i feel like is nice of him very to lucky do. very you know? lucky because the next guy that they encounter not as lucky <laughs> ceremoniously beheaded yeah. uh let's see in, in the in the books this this time between like uh uh frodo getting the ring and uh, the, them figuring everything out. 17 years, right? Frodo getting the ring? Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. I think he gets it. You out. mean like the research? The time between yeah, the, the research, the research Sorry. everything? Yeah. Oh, was it? I yeah, so. which is such a weird thing because like it doesn't feel like that in there. But like I guess yeah, Hobbits probably... age slower too. Yeah. So Frodo's supposed really to be like tell. 50 in Lord yeah. of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and like he, it's equivalent to him being in his like early 20s. He looks yeah. sixteen. Yeah. Uh, when we were, we, when we were little, when we were little, Cool Greg used to. He went through a phase where uh, he would call me Dildo Baggins. <laughs> of course, <laughs> and, like he really committed to it for a <laughs> long time. Really oh, wish you hadn't said that. that's Dildo. so good. 
Oh, that's great. God bless Cool Greg. Uh, we get uh, a cool shot of them in the bar. Rumors are spreading throughout uh, that there's there's some shit going down as Frodo and the gang drink. Uh, later that night, of course, Gandalf returns in a fevered state and throws the ring into the fire. He places it back in Frodo's hand. Uh, and then much to his dismay, we get that shot where he's relieved at first as he's like, there's nothing there. And then he sees the writing. And he's Again, like, just just Ian McKellen. And it was like uh, like some of the best acting performances. And it's so subtle. And it's just like his look of. Oh, thank God. Like everything I feared is like not true. And then Frodo goes, wait. And then he just oh, like, he's his like, his face of fear, like, oh God, it's just so scary. <laughs> it's, it's got, I've got to imagine that it's like, you know, when I was waiting for jury duty, right. And like, mm-hmm. and they're saying like, I was like in fear this whole time. I have to do jury duty. It's going to be such a nightmare. And then, well, and then COVID happened and kind of interrupt that, that whole process, <laughs> which is, I guess it's probably worse. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's not like it at all. (laughs) That's a terrible, terrible uh, comparison. Of course, the the language on the ring is that of Mordor. Uh, It's in the common language. He says the translation is one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them. Uh, He tells Frodo the story of the ring. (laughs) Evil is stirring a Mordor. The ring has awoken. It's heard its master's call. Uh, The spirit of Sauron is imbued in the ring so long as it lives. He so shall he and motherfucker he is back. Uh, But no one knows the ring is here, right? Do they, Gandalf? Do they? Andy, give me me a little. Do they, Gandalf? Do they, they, Gandalf? That was really good. Yeah, that Thank was you. great. And then Gandalf's like, Ugh, I think they know he's here. Because it turns out the enemy found Gollum and tortured his ass. And amidst the screams, two words escaped. Shire. And he gives it to me. Shire. Baggins. <laughs> and then Frodo freaks out as two, uh, we'll call them Dark Riders for now, but they are, in fact, the Ring Wraiths, lop off a, a hobbit's head outside. And I'm like, wow, man, that first dude really got off just clean. He was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. The snitch went free. Frodo wants uh-huh. Gandalf to take the ring, but Gandalf cannot do it. Don't tempt me, Frodo. I would use that ring for from a desire to do Don't good, but me, through me, oh, uh, it's it, I would wield a power too great and terrible to imagine. And he's like, "Well, this shit can't stay in the Shire, man. People will start losing their heads." Ah, uh, I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. No, but, that's great, Nick. That's uh, good. Frodo packs, and he's like, Frodo, you got to get out of here. So he packs and heads for the village of Bree, where Gandalf will be waiting for him uh, at the inn of the Prancing Pony. Uh, meanwhile, Gandalf uh, will seek the guidance of the head of his order. Uh, he tells him to stay off the main roads and don't tell people your name. And also, don't bring any of your idiot friends. And if you do bring them, at least tell them what's going on. So they don't just shoot in their stupid mouth off at the, at the, at the bar. So when Frodo drinking. goes by himself. So Frodo decides to go by himself first, but no. No, he doesn't. We got a goddamn not, peeping Tom, and everyone's Sam cool about it. Outside windows. We don't know what Sam does outside windows, guys. We're not going to. Yeah. He's for sure being a peeping gonna... Tom. I'll like, oh, tell you what he's not doing. Sam's not dropping no eaves. Exactly, Elise. He ain't dropping no eaves, guys. Come on. You don't think so? I mean, just that's trimming the hedges. Because I feel like for sure he's dropping his pants while he's eating. Yep. There you go. He's just hitting it. <laughs> He's hitting his little hobbit. You know what I mean? Oh, Just God. whacking that thing, hairy little head. Uh, Gandalf tells Frodo, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gandalf tells Frodo, never put the ring on. The agents of the Dark Lord will be drawn to its power. So they start, man. He's, so he was like, Sam, you got to go with him now. And Sam's like, cool, I'll, I'll definitely do it because I like Rose. And everyone's like, do you? Do you like Rose? Uh, <laughs> so they start walking, guys. And walking. And walking. Oh, God, here we go. And walking. <laughs> until they get... Mm-hmm. Until they get to that line uh, that Sam has never crossed, I love this little moment where he goes, "This is it. This is the this is the farthest I've ever been away from home. If I take one more step, I will I will go farther than I've ever been." And, uh, and to which Frodo goes, "Hey, there's a dark lord after us. So yeah. Get your hairy footed ass <laughs> over here, and let's get to the yeah. end of the pouncing pony so that we can meet fucking Eastern promises and all of I, his <laughs> glorious beauty." I do just want to highlight that li- highlight the line of like I think this movie does such a great job of setting up the stakes and like how scary and terrifying this is where he goes don't put it on Frodo remember it wants to be found yeah <laughs> it's just like oh my god like but that's like the again, scariest fucking thing ever again another master of storytelling uh, a stroke of genius for the storytelling right is that you have this great ring this powerful ring that will allow you to hide from everything but guess what it also acts as a homing device from the people who are trying to kill you the ones you're trying to hide hide from such a cool little moral dilemma that you have when you, when you put this thing on and also in uh, terms of like building characters and and setting setting this up as to why Sam is the real hero for the rings here. And I'm saying that definitively now, but you're establishing these characters that are, that are so, uh, you know, pure of heart, as Andy said to, to Sam, the crossing a threshold 
is such a, a monumental moment that he's in his heart. He's so pure and he's not thinking like, well, I knew, I want world domination. I you know, this ring could corrupt me. He's just thinking, I just want to cross this line to say that I've done something yeah. like beautiful. It's beautiful. It's so great. Uh, I don't know if he's pure heart or not, because remember, we did he just is. catch him outside. He wasn't and- masturbating. <laughs> uh, there's a good chance <laughs> he was. That, come on. It's pretty just, clear. Uh, what else was he doing? He, 10% chance that he, the he reason did. he's not leaving. Uh, never mind. Forget about it. At least forget. <laughs> <laughs> that joke's not worth it. Uh, then let's see. While cooking some protein, of course, they hear the song of wood elves who are headed toward the Grey Havens, the harbor beyond the White Towers. They're leaving Middle Earth never to return. Uh, this, I think, is a scene that was added. I don't remember mm-hmm. this being in the, in the original one, but it's a cool little scene that sets up what the, it, it just kind of sets up what the Grey Haven is a little bit. It doesn't give you really much, but it tells you that there's the elf heaven we all hope to get in one day. Uh, the next morning, Gandalf rides toward a uh, hard toward uh, Isengard, seeking the counsel of Count Dooku, who may or may not be Darth Tyrannus, but now goes by the name of Saruman. Yeah. Uh, he tells Saruman, I'm going to say it like that because otherwise Please I'm going to start don't. saying Sauron. Uh, that the ring has been discovered and then gets chastised for smoking too much hobbit weed. He's like, man, you've been hanging out with those fucking hobbits too much, and those little fuckers like their green. Uh, Saruman tells Gandalf that the Lord of Mordor has re- regained much of his power, though he can't yet take physical form. He can still see all through the eye of Sauron. He's gathering all the evil to him, and soon he'll be able to amass an army big enough to take over Middle-earth. Uh, and then Gandalf's like, dude, we gotta do something. When he asks how he knows this, Saruman brings him uh, to the Seeking Stone, uh, but Gandalf freaks out. I love this moment. He's what like, a oh, great moment. Moment. cool Stone. moment. And he I goes, love- the, other, the other stones are unaccounted for, and they operate a lot like a Discord call that you yeah. have to make sure you leave, because if you don't leave, everyone's just seeing Everybody what you're doing leave. on the other side of your camera. Uh, but I, again, like this is, what, three or four lines of dialogue that easily set up such a complicated concept uh, of yeah. like, uh, you're using a Palantir? Like, we can't use that. Uh, they're mm-hmm. not all accounted for. We don't know yeah. who's watching. And it's just so fucking like well done in such a small amount of time. <laughs> like we and immediately right. understand this like crazy thing. And, and again, for, good, for me not knowing these characters at all and seeing them, like you get the the visual understanding that they're both good guys because of how they're dressed. They look oh, yeah. similar. We already know Gandalf is like this the fucking homie. So you see Gandalf this guy like, oh, he's a homie too. And the way that they he with the the twist happens of like, oh no, he's he's corrupted, he's bad. It's like it hits so much harder, and you don't need to know their whole history because it's you feel it. Like just right. and this little visual representation. I love yeah, that. again, again, like dro- drop in the, the little cloth and covering the, the palantir, and immediately Sauron pops up again. Yeah, so and you cool. see Ian McKellen's face, like, oh shit. Oh, shit. Like, yeah. oh no. Yeah, it's great, so good. Yeah. Great visual storytelling on that one. Uh of course, Sauron, so, excuse me. Saruman also tells him that the nine have left minus Morgul, referring, of course, to the, the writers that we've been seeing all around lopping people's heads off. They will find the ring and kill the one who carries it. But when Gandalf tries to leave, Saruman stops him. Uh, there are none who can contend with the will of Sauron. And at this and point, I'm like, again, drop down on my knees. You're right. 100%. Let's go. Let's kill Tim. Let's kill Andy. Let's kill Andy. Let's go. <laughs> you guys, you guys get that these writers are the fallen men that had the. Well, not, the yeah, well, it hasn't been rights. revealed yet. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll I'm get sorry. To I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. But that, that's to me is just that's such a cool another moment. cool part of storytelling. Well, also, also minions, minions, like, minions are well, when, also when the we way see them for yeah. the first time. It's so cool too because we see them as these ghostly figures of these king, these dead kings. It's so well done. Again, the visual storytelling to Andy's point earlier, where it's like we you see that flash of sorrow, and now as an audience, it's such a, it's so well done because now you are trained to know that anytime anytime you see that. Or it, it pops up, you know he's watching, you know he's got the influence over whatever that person or that thing is. It's so cool. Also, uh, shout out, shout out to Christopher Lee and Ian McKellen for always saying Mordor. Like Mordor. I just love that they they Every roll time, they yeah. roll both R's. I love that. It's, it's a lot. It's it a lot. Good. I, like I don't lot. know if I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they will, of course, find the ring and kill the one who carries it. When Gandalf tries to leave, Sauron stops him. Uh, let's see. He wants him to join up with the evil with evil, but Gandalf ain't about that jazz. Uh, they get it on, man. And Gandalf holds his own for a while until Count Dooku uh, gets the better of him. Uh, Sauron gets the better, and he just twirls him up into the tower. Can we just uh, for a second? Let, I mean, it's a stupid looking fight, right? I think it's cool. No, they're fighting with cool. their breakdance, fighting with uh, with staff. <laughs> it's, it's, my, it's my thing is, it's, no... it, I I think it's stupid looking because we have a visual understanding of what wire work looks like. But I think in, in when we watch movies, but I think that it contextualizes this really well in the scene that is coming up when he throws him off the building and he like keeps him this way. It's like I that one shot to me convinced me that I'm like, no, they 
use their con- their powers and it is very rigid. So it's like it when they spin around and it looks stupid, it's like, no, that's just how it would actually look. <laughs> so and, you know, fighting doesn't necessarily need to look I cool. Say, I'm going to have a wizard fight. I do think this is more interesting than, you know, Dumbled or uh, like oh, Harry oh, whoa, Potter. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, slow it down. Whoa, whoa. Uh, I agree. What, shooting I agree. a fucking Elisa. fire dragon while Dumbledore well, no, but, makes but, a goddamn water snake? To, to Elise's point, that one of the things that that's cool. <laughs> well, so we're I'm, I'm trained watching the Harry Potter series to have them cast the spells. But as you know, as everyone knows here, of course, because you're all well-versed in Harry Potter lore, Absolutely. the more advanced you get as a wizard or a witch, man. you don't have to say the spell anymore. So when yep. we do get to that Voldemort, uh, 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 Dumbledore fight, Fucking they're just cool. casting stuff. And it's so cool. But that's what we get here, too. But we also remember the way Harry Potter, we also remember the way Harry Potter stood when he was just like, kind of like. Give me an Andy. Give it to me. This is lame. This is sucked. He sucked. <laughs> All right, you know, what, you know what, blue shorts? Just keep seated, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let's get back to the pot here. Uh, let's see. This, this, is gonna, this is gonna turn Nick's opinion. He's gonna start hating the Lord of the Rings. Now. You're, you're one more. You're one more Harry comment, a Harry Potter comment away from me just making Nick, up my I, own synopsis I for the rest of the I love how into it you are. I love how into it you are. All right, all right, all right. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. I'm getting the brow sweat right now. Uh, out in the cornfield, we get the first instance of Sam freaking out when he thinks he's lost Frodo. Uh, and this is a, to me, this was a, I, I glossed over this moment the first time I watched it, but I think it's really, really important because he has that moment where he can't find Frodo and he's like, shit, like, this is my purpose. I'm supposed to be here for him. Gandalf told me and he says here, he says, don't you lose him, uh, Samwise Gamgee. And he's like, I take this very seriously um, because eventually we'll find some windows together, if you know what I mean. Uh, of course, as they're running around. <laughs> Wait, they run I don't straight. know what you mean. <laughs> no, we don't need to know. Just keep going. We don't need to know. <laughs> they run good into Mary and Pippin, who have uh, who are being chased by a farmer because they stole all of his carrots and stuff, and maybe they deflowered his daughter. We don't know. There might be that. Jesus uh they all Those are big ass carrots, carrots, you know what I mean? They're, well, they're normal sized carrots. No, I know, I know. But I like <laughs> this time like this is the first moment we see the scale of like aside from seeing someone in like, you know, him in the house. But like, yeah. like this giant ball, it's like, oh that's a, that's a cabbage, and it's like, Jesus, these guys are small. It's it's cool. I know. Yeah. I love that. I, love I, I wish too. later we got a moment where um, what's his face? The Str- Strider is holding one of the daggers and hands it to them instead of the, him just placing it down. Because yeah. for the longest yeah. time, the daggers just look like knives. And it's like, oh, cool. They have knives. And l- way later, you'll see someone else grab it. And it's like, oh, shit. That's right. They're really small. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah, in the hands of the Hobbit, they look like swords. Right, and then right, right. Someone else, their little tiny dagger, which I think is cool. Uh, of course, they all run away and they tumble down a hill, and everything's fine until Frodo gets up and looks down this wooded glen, this road, and everything goes silent for a second, and we just hear distant breathing, and then a scream, and it's terrifying. <laughs> Uh, he yells for the so hobbits to get, he's like, get off the road. We got to get off the road. And this is one of those things where I'm like, this just reminds you of like when you're terrified and you think something's under your bed and you don't want to leave your bed because they're just nestled in the nook underneath this tree root. And the writer that looks like, I mean, I'll but say, I love the, the, uh, I love the Harry Hitchcock Potter shot. I love the yeah. Hitchcock shot of the, oh, the so cool. super it fun. just feels so like you get the, like claustrophobic. The, yeah. the dolly in, uh, zoom out. Yeah. Uh, where it just everything goes yeah. um this thing starts looking for them and it starts to smell them uh, until someone gets the bright idea to i think it's pippin throws a carrot uh into the distance to divert it uh and then they they run away uh, sorry guys hold on that sh- that shot real quick while you're suggesting this oh no no we lost you nick i can't there hear he you yeah, there yeah, he yeah. Is. i'm back i'm back sorry okay, about that guess. guys yeah sorry i caught something um what were you saying kevin Oh, I was gonna say that shot is—is is that a Hitchcock shot, or was that made famous in Jaws by what's his face? The dolly. Oh, it's a shot that yeah, yeah, yeah Jaws. So Spielberg, right? Oh, I've always known yeah. that as the Hitchcock shot from like I think it was Birds, maybe I don't remember which one it was. It's it's a it's a technique a lot of directors use. Yeah. I don't know. So so cool. Such a weird. Thing. Oh, from Vertigo, yeah. Vertigo. It's, it's Vertigo. Yes, yeah. There is a Zolly in that too. Yeah. Um, as they as let's see, once when the sun sets, the riders find them and chase them toward a river. Uh, this is a great scene. They steal a boat uh, to nearly escape, and we're like, oh, do these things not like water? Can they not just swim after them? Uh, at first I thought it was a lake, and I was like, just go around the lake, but then of course they make it a point to be like, where's the nearest crossing? Oh, it's like 20 miles away. Cool, good. It's a river. 
You can't do that. But and such a, good, are... a great scary shot of like the the rider riding away, joining up with everybody else. Like we're gonna go get these little fuckers. Well, like, let's go get them, dude. <laughs> it, it reminds me, I was watching a, a show called Meat Eater, Andy, which you love the logo from, right? And there's a great oh, moment man. where they, they're out <laughs> in the snow. They're out in the snow and they're they're hunting, I think, deer or elk or something like that. And uh, one of the people who's brand new, they come across a river. And she goes, can we just go around? And the guy that's her guide goes, if the water's flowing, you can't go around. So like, and I was like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because it's a river. So you can't just keep, you got to go around until you find something that either goes over it or it'll eventually get to a lake. Love that logo. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's such a great logo. Anyway, pouring rain as they approach this, <laughs> the, the city walls of Bree, uh, they go in. Once at the end, Frodo tells the innkeeper, he was like, what's your name? He's like, uh, I'm Ron Underhill. And these are my friends. The Underhills, and they uh, and he leaves word for Gandalf who hasn't arrived yet, and, and they're like, "Crap!" The guy's like, "I haven't seen Gandalf. Gandalf hasn't been here in six months," and he's like, "Shit, we are screwed." Uh, everyone is, of course, super suspicious of hobbits because hobbits never leave uh, the Shire. Frodo asks, uh, he looks over and he sees this dope ass hooded figure over there just smoking and smoking. He's just sexy, so badass, just smoking a pipe, yeah. sexy. And as he takes a drag off the pipe, it lights up his cool eyes, and you're like, "Who is that guy?" Um, and of course, the uh, let's see. And it gets even cooler because the Samwise oh is like, oh, that's Strider. Like, yeah. that's what? Like, oh, Are you kidding me? Yeah. Strider, Strider was like, that's the son of Arathorn. <laughs> no. No, no. no. Strider. Strider. Yeah. Strider. The innkeeper tells him the man is a ranger known only as Strider. And so, if you're known only as something, like, you got a cool pass, man. Fuck you're, yeah, you're, dude. <laughs> Uh, as Frodo looks, of course, under the table, he inadvertently fiddles with the ring, uh, which, and then once again, uh, you know, we see him constantly battling with this thing, sort of taking control of him, then he, he gets himself out of it. As Mary, uh, being the stupid idiot that he is, lets it slip that he, uh, instead of Mr. Underhill, he is not Underhill. He is actually Frodo Baggins. Oh, Baggins! So, Frodo, Frodo Baggins! He's right, like, yeah, come it's, on, it's right there. It's like, fuck <laughs> off! What do you think we're doing here, Mary? God damn. I, and again, this is one of those parts where I'm like, Lord Sauron, can you do me a favor? For it? I'm going to kneel to you. Can we go <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to watch them die as they're screening. Uh, he runs toward him to stop him, but accidentally slips. And as he does so, the ring flies itself up into the air and then lands squarely on Roto's pointer, uh, Frodo's pointer finger, and he disappears. Uh, and as he does so, he enters into, I think they call it the Shadow World, where the Eye of Sauron spots him, and all the minions are like, oh, we know where you are now, motherfucker, and we are coming straight for you uh and as he uh, he pops out and then strider grabs him and pulls him up and he tells the hobbits and his friends they need to get the hell out of there uh of course later that night he's proven right uh because as they sleep the riders uh, enter the room and stab the crap out of their cots what, a, the, what a dramatically edited scene that i love <laughs> you I know, know? It's a little much but it is there i, uh, I love, I love the, it the story of all this stuff but the ring falling right on his finger i was like come on like, <laughs> like, what the no it wanted and i get it wanted, i, I I get it. I get it. It's just like the way that it looks. I, it was one of those things where my this doesn't hold up to me. And it, it took me out of it that I, I didn't. like. Oh, it. really? Yeah, like I just story. he wanted to catch it, but it wouldn't let him just catch it. It wanted to fucking get on his finger. It wanted it like, to nope, be. Nope, 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 nope. On, in, it wanted to. It wanted him inside of it. Yeah, I get it. it. I get it. Like Sam. It was like, let's get this thing on. Like let's go find some windows. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thankfully, the beds are stuffed with feathers, and there, as an diversionary tactic, Strider watches from across the way as the 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 dark figures scream in the building across from them, and they kind of seem like, man, we're pretty cool. I'd be like, we are 15 feet away from these things. This was a bad choice. We should have ridden out of here the second that ring went on. Uh, but he tells the hobbits that, um, that the writers, and this is where we get a great, the great backstory lease of the writers. The writers used to be the great kings until in their greed, they accepted the nine rings from Sauron. Now they are the Nazgul, the oh, ring rates, cool. neither living nor dead. Uh, at all times, they are drawn to the power of the ring. They will never stop hunting you. And this I'm is like, one of those moments where they're just like, hey, what should we call him? Like, what's really badass? Oh, the Nazgul. It's like, oh, but what about the ring rates? It's like, fuck it. Let's call them both. Both of <laughs> yeah. those are so goddamn yeah. cool. So ring cool. Ring is the coolest name ever. I, uh, uh, I, I did not remember until I rewatched it that it's like an infection where you can become a ring wraith, I guess, if you get stabbed by the ring wraith sword. Yeah. Yeah. It can, well, I guess it makes you like the not living, not dead. Yeah, a zombie. Power, well, a wraith. Yeah, a wraith. Uh, let's be started. What's up, at least? I was gonna say, long time I thought that the creatures that they ride in the in the later films, I thought those were the Nazgul. Oh, oh. like the the dragon looking things with the yeah, the, the, so cool. I just I I just I just thought, thought, thought this is Nazgul was is like the Mordor language for Ringwraith. I didn't. Yeah. Know, I don't know if that's what they. I don't know if that's the translation or not. Or if they just are so cool, they have three or four different names. They're known as the Dark Riders, the Ringwraiths, and the Cool Dudes. That's what they call them, too, mm -hmm. Mordor. Because in Mordor, they're oh, car screens. Like, dude, cool dudes yeah. are back. 
That's oh yeah, the, yeah, definitely the ring rates like they can get into like all these cool clubs. Oh my and, like, god! Yeah, yes. like, oh, not, oh like, you're with the ring rates. Yeah, come oh, on, in, come on in. in. And then they see them just in that like the one booth that has a little rope around it. Yeah, and like that's the VIP section of this club. Like, why am I getting bottle service? Yeah, stupid. Anyway, Strider takes them uh, into the wild, and the hobbits question where are where they are now and if they can trust him. And the Strider, he's like, I'm leading you all to Rivendale to visit the house that Elrond built. Uh, when they hit the snow, and uh, line like, the oh, Rivendale, fuck yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, I love this part too. When they hit the snow line, the hobbits try to stop for a second breakfast. And you know what, guys? It was at this point that I why that I was reading this book. I was like, I think I got more in common with these hobbits than anything else <laughs> in this movie because I'm a damn fan of second and third breakfast. You know, I used to go so to college junior all the time. Yeah. Is this when they start uh, cooking at the campsite? No, so oh, they, no, that's they walk okay. more, and we get again. We get a lot more topical. Like we we get a sense of where they're walking, marshland, highlands, uh, and then they finally uh, come down in the or sit, camp down in the highlands. I think Strider hunted a deer for him. We get a shot where he's bringing in some sort of. Uh, I think uh, that was added, right? Uh, might have been. Yeah. Uh, as they sleep, it, it's never been cool to me like watching this movie and being like, Rush has a song called Rivendell. That's like the coolest fucking thing in the world. Well, like, what's amazing <laughs> is like if you go back and listen to Led Zeppelin, like a bunch of their songs are about the Misty Mountains and like Ring Wraith and, and all these things. Love Lord of the Rings. You guys are all nerds. I love it. Uh, yeah. As they sleep, Strider sings a lovely song about Liv Tyler, and it goes a little like this: <laughs> I could stay awake. Just to hear you. Wait, the, the, the song is not about Liv Tyler. Uh, it is definitely about Liv Tyler. No, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it about Strider's mom? No, it's like it's another tale about a about a man falling in love with an elf woman. Wait, yeah, but oh no, bro! It, I just I just want everyone to remember that Liv Tyler was in Arbor. <laughs> <Man. laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> that was the that was the point of that Pearl Harbor. Show. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like uh, an old, it's an old tale sort of thing. He talks about his, the lady of Luthien, an elf maiden who gave her love to Baron, a mortal. She died destroying a plant, uh, and then she died destroying a planet killing asteroid. Uh, over in Isengard, Sauron hits up Saruman to build him an army worthy of Mordor. He's like, dude, we're going to need some orcs. So Gandalf watches from his prison high atop the tower as goblins uproot trees below and start making a weapons and orc factory down below. And it took me out for a while because I was like, "How? why are there little orcs and big orcs? And then I read the description. I was like, all right, they're goblins. Not to be confused with orcs who are much bigger and scarier. Uh, the hobbits rest at... Uh, at what was once the great watchtower of Amon Sul. Uh, when they set up camp, Strider gives them all swords, uh, well, daggers, but they look like swords, to Kevin's point earlier. Uh, without thinking, of course, Mary Pippin and Sam start a campfire so they can cook, cook some more protein. And I'm like, these guys are hitting on every level for me. Eat protein all day. Just push <laughs> through when you get the squirts. Just push through it. Doesn't it doesn't fill you up all the way, you know? It's little... St- just get it. Just keep going. Uh, let's see. Of course, the fire has already drawn the ring wraiths to them uh, and who they quickly ascend on these un- unfortunate hobbits and who stand back to back in the ruins of the watchtower as the Nazgul approach. Uh, outmatched, Frodo takes out his ring and places it on his finger. And as he does, uh, once invisible, he sees the race for what they really are, the ghostly corpses of the dead kings. Uh, Tim from kindoffunny.com. Go ahead, Tim. Why wasn't there nine of them? Should, isn't there supposed to be nine of them? They, they split up to look for him in different places. And so like at one yeah, point okay. there's four. And then at one point Liv Tyler talks about how she's like, there's still five out there looking for us somewhere and they're going to catch cool. up with us. So yeah. at, at a certain point you'll see him. But also from a story telling standpoint, it's because the next part is so dope. They were like, we can't have him fight off nine people before he can definitely fuck up. Uh, because as he tries to, uh, let's see, he tries to stop one from taking the ring, but it stabs him in the shoulder. Then uh, every, as everything seems hopeless, who comes in, Andy? Who comes in to save the day? Strider. Strider comes in. Out of gold. He in and he starts <laughs> jacking fools with his sword and with a fire, uh, with a club full of fire. Uh, Frodo has been stabbed by a Morgul blade. He says he needs uh, what I thought was, what at first when I watched this and read this, was Elvis mat- med- uh, medicine. And then I got really excited. I was like, cool, a little Elvis, <laughs> little Elvis in the story. No, it's Elvish. Elvish. Not as cool. Uh, over at Isengard, <laughs> the goblins have made really good progress, actually, over the last, like, five minutes uh, on their weapons and orc factory. Uh, and then a little white butterfly passes by Gandalf, and he catches it, and he whispers something into its cute little white butterfly ear. He um, whispers into a butterfly, and it sends mm-hmm. a message to the eagles. What okay. the fuck is that? Can, awesome. can I cool. say on, on the Isengard war factory for a second, when you see, you see first see Isengard in Fellowship, and then you later learn, you later see what if he comes. Yeah. That's well, just the incredible. scene of them tearing, just ripping the ripping gooey the like skin off of the orc for the first time as it's Ooh, coming God. out of mud. Yeah. And, and it <laughs> screams and like crushes a goblin. You're like, dude. You know what I always think of when when he's, you know, you're they're making the Urukai 
is uh and they're like being birthed like that and they're, they're it's essentially like a machine they're processing these urukai as i think of in power rangers rita repulsa's like monster machine yeah oh yeah out of the it like spits out wait so are they are they making them there at, yeah at that they're, they're not pulling them out from no they're a mix of uh of uh orcs orc and, and goblins it, it's like a it's like a, a scientific fucking like, like eugenics disaster yeah exactly <laughs> so all, orcs aren't goblins no no orcs and goblins are different pieces. but urukais are a combination oh, of both they, like some yeah the urukai are the big scary guys that, no, right, like, right right they're like the, the... Oh, i didn't know that that's yeah. cool uh of course for, uh let's see uh, frodo is passing quickly into the shadow world. So Strider tells Sam that we gotta we gotta get out there. We gotta find some king's foil to slow the poison. So he goes out into the forest looking, and of course, the only person that could actually sneak up on a ranger is none other than Liv. Liv Tyler, <laughs> who literally glows as she approaches Frodo. And here's a, a fun trivia fact, Sam. I don't know if you have this or not. They did not add that glow in. Turns out, Liv Tyler just glows. She just, she she just glow. So <laughs> Such a perfect human being from yeah. Empire Records to Armageddon to this movie that they just they're like, she's got we can't do anything. Guys. It. Optically she's optically great. glowing. Hey, you know what else she's great in? The leftovers. You all should watch it. Really good show. Okay. Okay. Uh <laughs> Frodo is fading, so Arwen, of course, uh, wants to take him to her father for help. Arwen offers to take the hobbit across the river, and we have a great little back and forth here where we're like, these two know each other pretty well because he's like, I'll take her. And then she's like, I'm a much better writer than you are, dude. Come on. Let's let's like Give, give credit where credit's seen. He's like, I got to run. So wait, uh, hold, real quick, the, the chat is uh, correcting some stuff here. They're saying that the orcs and goblins are in fact the same, and the urukai are orcs and humans mixed together. Oh, I yeah, I think they are correct about the orcs and humans. Interesting. The Numenor, to be specific. The what? The Numenor. Well, the Numenor is like a, the race of men. Yeah. God, it's... Cool. It's, it's uh, like, Tim, it's like when people call Earth in movies uh, Terra. Terra. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. It's Got like it. that Andy, sort of thing. Andy, I was thinking about you when uh, Frodo's all like fucked up and they're like, shit, we got to get this like very specific plant. And it's dark and it's like rainy and cold. And they're all out there. I'm like, I imagine like in that scenario, it would be me and you in the fucking woods having to find this. And both of us are like, we're not equipped for this. I don't this, know what I'm this, doing, what man. Are we, what, what, I am what not. Are these weeds? There's a whole bunch of plants. Yeah. Around. This right. sucks. In the storytelling of this, is Sam is a gardener. So, of course, right away, he's like, this weed, I know it. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, of course, the plan now Wait, is for Also, he is a peeping Tom. Let's not forget that. I just want to yeah, throw he, that he, in he there. He what's in people's gardens, yeah, not because yeah. of a passion for plants. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Damn, that's so crazy. I could have sworn that Gandalf said that they were a mix of goblin and orc. I, I'm so confused by that. Oh, My bad. That. That's on me. That's on me, I guys. Do, I do the human part does sound right. Got it. Either way, maybe. Uh, Arwen's plan is to get uh, Frodo uh, over to the kingdom of Elrond. Once there, the power of our father's kingdom will protect him. Uh, and then they have the back and forth, but she's like, "Listen, I'm, you know I'm right for this." She throws Frodo onto the back of her horse, and she starts riding hard and fast across the land toward the river. As all of the ringwraiths start to converge upon her and give chase, uh, she reaches the river and stops. To and I fucking love this moment because at first i was like oh these guys they just don't like water right i was thinking oh they can't swim but no they're gonna come at her but she's like i gotta make a stand here or i am screwed because i'm still because get fucking Elsa. and then and as she approaches arwen screen uh let's see uh, she, so she calls calls upon the river uh in elvish to wash them away which is so cool and they get there's nothing away. cooler than that like again imagine 18 year old Andy, like just tons of masturbation, World of Warcraft, <laughs> and watching a river out of made of horses. Like, it's just the coolest concept ever. It's so badass. Why'd you have to add the masturbation <laughs> thing? I feel like that didn't add anything. Yeah, to but this. I like full transparency. I'm Thank all you. about I respect that. I respect yeah. that. Mm. Uh, let's well, see. Well, you know, and like Arwen says, like, come and claim him. Yeah. Like, she's like, just come and claim. And it's, it's a total King Leonidas. You know, you put down your weapons, come and get them. Arwen, like, not fucking around. Yeah, it's so it's awesome. awesome. It's a great comment done beautifully by Liv Tyler in this. Uh, of course, she gets Frodo to the shore and he passes out as she screams for him not to give in to the dark. I don't, I, I will say, I don't really love Arwen crying about Frodo. Like, they barely met. I don't really fully understand why she's, well, she's, she's crying so, as if, she, like, she cares so much about everything. You know, it's one of these beautiful little hobbits. 
Yeah, dying. sure. I just feel like I wouldn't even remember his name. I'd be like, oh, fuck, you're dying, man. Like, <laughs> and I just got a French bulldog, cute little French bulldog pup named Frodo, and he was about to die. And you were like, I can save him because I'm the fastest B baller out there outside of the school. And you had him alone. He was dying. Wouldn't you? I guess they were running for like days. I guess they were yeah. traveling for days. Wait, yeah. So right. that's the thing. Six days. Yeah. Is that right? That seems. Yeah, that yeah, seems yeah. like they they. Fast as fuck. No food. He, Doesn't he matter. He hung Kevin. on for a long time. Just drives the horse into the ground. Gets up. Gets on another one. Drives. Him. <laughs> <laughs> drives like, it's ra- right. like it's oh. <laughs> like it's a Fast and Furious. Like you have to leave a exactly. getaway car here and take another <laughs> getaway car. <laughs> they cut that out of the. the... <laughs> Uh, let's see. Of course, he passes out, and then when he comes to, he wakes up in the house of Elrond, where he's greeted by Gandalf, who finally met him there. Gandalf tells him why he was delayed. That asshole Saruman imprisoned him and was about to kill him until he joined the, uh, unless he joined the ranks of the one true Lord of the Ring. Thankfully, his friend the Butterfly came back with a giant ass eagle to carry Gant off away. Uh, Mr. Smith comes in to welcome all of them to Riverdale, and I'm like, "Where's Archie and Jughead?" Is what I was wondering. <laughs> Man, I had to make that joke. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> A wig? What's that? Is it a wig? I don't do it. Is it a wig? I don't know. We're wigging out with Scarpino. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wigging Out with Scarpino, the wig podcast where we decide whether or not people are wearing wigs in popular movie franchises. And I'm going to spoil it for you. Everyone's wearing a wig in this movie from here on out. <laughs> that is all. Including- Even Vigo. Yeah, you go definitely. They're all Americans, no nudity. When we get to that scene in the in the in, where they're having the party in Hobbit Town, and I just look around, and they all just look like little puffs of hair in at the tables. I'm like, this is terrible. Like, these, we, don't, we don't need this. We I feel all... like I feel like he's wearing extensions. Vigo? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Hugo Weaving here. Oh no, I think it's nah, okay. he's definitely got a wig. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like his his hairline looks the same. Like they didn't change his hairline. That's this is the start of new wig technology, Kev. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, let's see. He comes in and, and Frodo is reunited with a gang. And guess what? Bilbo is there too, and he's old as dirt. Uh, and he find he finally finished his book. Uh, he wanted to see all the sites in the book uh, the, from the book again, but he's a little too old now. Uh, and all old people are useful for really, as we all know, is just knitting sweaters and calling you on the phone at the least opportune time. Uh, Frodo tells him that he's not like Bilbo. He's like, I'm scared, man. Bill was like, I am old. I can't understand what the hell you're saying. Uh, and then Sam wants to leave. Their mission is complete. You know, and Frodo's like, you know what? It is. It's time to go home. Uh, and then we get a scene with El- Elrond and uh, Gandalf. He tells and Gandalf that the enemy is moving against Rivendell. Saruman is... Uh, Rivendell, Nick. Rivendell, excuse me, not Rivendell. <laughs> like, dude, you're getting a Dell. Okay, I missed that point last time on, on Josh Brady. Saruman is, uh, is, is bringing an army... Uh, he's making an army. Uh, he's coming for the ring, and the evil cannot be concealed even by the power of the elves. It cannot stay here. And Gandalf's like, damn it. That was my first and only fix. I have no other plans outside, of course. Uh, Sean Bean, Orlando Bloom, and the dude from Raiders of the Lost Ark show up. Uh, Gandalf I tells love it. I know I already said this, but it's just like, I love that we just spent forever with these little hobbit fucks. And then they're like, uh, no, no, no. Now all the cool guys are here. Oh, yeah. at and it's just I love seeing them have their little like glory like money shots, a little slow mo like, walk in, be, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. You Ned Stark, fuck yeah. I love like how many the... of them come with their dads too. Well, because <laughs> yeah. it's like they're all sort of the leaders of the respective kingdoms, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're all Boromir sending their like, representatives. Yeah, so Boromir is the representative from Gondor, right? Yes. Or no. Okay. Yes. yes. And then the elves, the dwarves, are, Gimli is the representative. Gimli's and he's kind of blind. Dude, yeah. how cool is it when they have that moment where like uh, Boromir stands up and is talking shit, and Gandalf is like, "Hey, shut the fuck up! That guy right there is the rightful king of Gondor. Yeah. So, and you're just the steward's son. And he's yeah. like, yeah, well, we don't need a king. Like, whatever. Gondor don't need no steward. It's yeah. like clearly it does. Yeah. <laughs> it really yeah. does. Uh, of course, Gandalf and Elrond. Uh, he's he's like we gotta. Gandalf's like we gotta gotta get the men together. And Elrond's like the the men are what failed us first. Men are weak. And I was there three thousand years ago when when uh, Isildur took the ring. That day, the strength of men failed. He led. Uh, he's like I led that motherfucker right to the mount the mouth of Mountain Doom's fire. But he just refused to throw that ring in. There's no strength left in men. But Gandalf oh, disagrees. There's Mount one. Doom. There's What's like that? fuck it. We're calling it Mountain Doom. <laughs> Hell yeah, we're calling it Mountain Doom. Uh, Tim, I don't know if we have an ad or not, but we're getting close. No, to we don't. Not this okay. week. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. There is one who can unite them. One 
who could reclaim the throne of Gondor. And he turned, he turned from the path a long time ago. He, he's chosen exile. And we're like, who could it be? Who could it be? Exactly. Then Boromir and Strider hang out in the courtyard late at night. And Boromir discovers the shards of Narsil, the sword that Isuldur cut. And used to cut the, the ring off of uh, uh, Sauron. Boromir dismisses it as a broken relic and and, and just passes. Uh, oh, excuse me, a broken relic of the past, and then leaves it just as Arwen comes in and asks Strider why Strider fears the past. He is the heir of Isildur and the rightful ruler of Gondor, yet he has chosen to be a bum. Uh, she basically, says, Arwen, basically, they're like, uh, "Hey, man, you should be the king." And he's like, "I don't want it. I don't. Want I don't it. want it." Jon Snow. Let it. Give it to my my little brother who has been in this all of five minutes. Um, <laughs> she says, you are Isildur's heir, not Isildur himself. You are not bound by his fate. Of course, Aragorn is worried that he'll have the same weakness as his predecessor, but Arwen has faith in him uh, that when he faces the same evil, he will have the strength to defeat it. And I'm like, dude, just give it to Liv Tyler. She'll figure it all out. Uh, yeah, the sure. shadow does not hold sway yet. Not over you, not over me. Uh, then as can you hear the love tonight plays, they head out into the creek below and they reminisce about when they first met back in the day, Arwen wanted to bind herself to him and shed her elvish immortality. Uh, and she's still, she's like, listen, man, nothing's changed. I still want to do that. I choose a mortal life in you over that, over immortality. And then in doing so, of course, she takes her necklace off and gives it to him and she binds herself to him. And I'm like, dude, just make out. Let's see it at least. Let's see that. Let's see it at least. Let's see the necklace. Well, I mean, obviously, this is just the the imagery. That's yeah, perfect. But... Yeah. <laughs> uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. At least no. Oh, shit. No, at least stay away we from it. Come back from the darkness. <laughs> we have five more episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the next morning, we get the great scene where Elrond holds court with the leaders of all the kingdoms, including men, dwarves, and elves. He wants them to unite or die. Uh, Frodo shows them the ring, and Boromir is all like, dude, uh, excuse me. Uh, and Boromir is all about that shit until Gandalf uses the the I guess they call it the the speech of Mordor to put him back in his place. Uh, Boromir, and that's thinking, all added in the extended. Yeah, this it, didn't happen in the theatrical. Oh, that's a good scene. I it's like great it. Scene. Boromir is like, this is a gift. We should use this gift, uh, even though that guy just referred to this as Isildur's bane. Uh, <laughs> but I, think, I still think we're good with this. Of course, Strider tells them that they can't use the ring because he uh, it only answers to one person, Sauron. But of course, Boromir fires back. What does a ranger know? And then Orlando Bloom, oh. who was oh. like a huge star at this point. Fucking and has loved this. And like is just barely there for this movie until this point. Stands up and says, uh, and, and let's just everyone know. This is no mere ranger to which I'm like, hey, man, maybe we shouldn't be calling them mere rangers, you know, because like rangers, it seems pretty hard to be a ranger. Like you got to yeah. be pretty skilled to do that. So like that's cool to begin with. But he says this is no mere ranger ranger. He is Aragorn, son of Arathorn. You owe him your allegiance. And I love hey. that because like, Go sorry. Oh, no, no sorry. Okay. No, you're good. Go for it. I, mean, I was just going to say pay respect, motherfucker. That's not really. Yeah, <laughs> it's just because they're 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 like really, really good friends. So I love that finally Legolas is like, fuck this shit. You mess with my boy. Yeah. Like, I'm going to my boy. You mess with me. We're the fellowship. Uh, of course, he is heir to Isildur's throne and heir to the throne of Gondor. Uh, Aragon tells Legolas, he's like, I appreciate it, man. He says in Elvis, he's like, just give it, give it a second. Sit down for a sec. Like, let's not let everyone know how cool I am. He gets it. He fucking gets it. Uh, Elrond seconds uh, what uh, Aragon said. No one can use this ring. It must be destroyed. And then Gimli, uh, and and I know this from personal experience, like most short people, just tries up and try and he tries to just he tries to show off. He's like, I got this shit. Don't, I'll lift this ring. It's pretty easy. And then he takes his axe out and tries to shatter the thing. But of course, the ring cannot be destroyed that way. It shatters the blade. Gimli, of axe. A man of action. I love it. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> the ring, definitely Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, the ring was, of course, forged in the fire of Mount Doom, and that's the only place where it can be destroyed. And Legolas volunteers to take it there, but the dwarves, everyone's like, whoa, you're not going to take it. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll, this is my thing. And then Boromir's like, I, I, I should be king of the Game of Thrones. And everyone's like, sit down, cousin. Uh, anyway, uh, what's that? Well, it's, they start arguing, and then Gimli's like, never trust arguing. an out. You yeah, know, we that. see his prejudice emerge here. And of course, Frodo uh, stares deep, deeply into the ring and realizes what has to be done. He stands up and shouts above all the other voices, I will take it. I will take the ring to Mordor. Uh, I, love, I love Gandalf's reaction. Like uh, Ian McKellen's reaction of like, oh, I didn't want yeah. you to have to do this. He knew, yeah. But he knew that's how it had to be. Yeah. But, 
And of course, then he says, though, he follows that up with, though I do not know the way. And everyone is taken aback by his bravery. And this scene is about to get fucking hype in three. I will help you bear this burden, Frodo Baggins, as long as it is yours to bear. Two, if by my life or death I can protect you, I will. You have my sword. One. And my bow. Zero. And my axe. Motherfucking axe. Dude. Holy I'm, shit. Oh, fucking tears cool. in my eyes. Oh, man. <laughs> and one by one, everyone rallies behind Frodo, including Boromir, Mary Pippin, and Sam uh, with this Elrond decrees. Nine companions. Well, hang on. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. We're really? flowing past this a little too fast. Nick, because Sam's masturbating in the bushes again, but he's the motherfucking hero. He doesn't, yeah. they already got the trilogy together. Sam doesn't need to step up. He doesn't need to come out of the bushes, put his dick in his pants, okay? He doesn't need to come out and say, Mr. Frodo, I'm coming with you. No, but he's a G and he's going to be there to the end because he's a real hero. So he says, I'm coming too. I feel like it also ruins yeah. the moment because we have this triumphant moment where ever, everyone is saying, like, oh, and my sword, my bow, my axe. And then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I won't let you go alone. And then fucking Mary and Pippin roll out and they're like, us too, us too. And it's like, yeah. all right, guys, yeah, thanks. I, I, thanks. I love that because I think it's a great feat. <laughs> no, I like this, it too. They have all this amazing bravery and, and, and Mary and Pippin are like, we're going to go. And then Elrond says, you shall be the fellowship of the ring. What and then the fuck? God, <laughs> and, then the and then Pippin goes, great. What where are we, we going? going? no idea what's happening uh, and dude, and here's the thing a point for us. how is this not the end of the movie like yeah. that's the craziest yeah. fucking thing like this feels like such a complete movie that would have ended on such a high point like no way if this dude, was I mean, in theaters and this yeah. ended here i would have been like let's Dope. fucking go i can't no, wait tim, for the tim, next but thing. like but like oh my god like again future spoilers i don't want to say no, but don't, just like don't like don't. let's go on some more like are you fucking kidding me that's like yeah. the coolest fucking line ever dude yeah, it's such, so a, good. such a beautiful moment such a such an iconic moment too and uh, it's so well done so well done oh man i love it i love it so much and then, uh, uh, the next scene i love so much too where they like go right to the door and fucking and Frodo's, Frodo's like, right or left? Right or left? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, left, the, left. that's, that's in the extended. That wasn't in the original either. Yeah. The extended, man, add a lot of really cool scenes that yeah. I enjoyed. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tim, were we ready? Yeah. Okay. Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku, Haiku in, in review. review. Haiku, Haiku in, in review. review. Ladies Every time he you. says, are you ready? I always think it's going to be Ragu Bagu, by the way. And I'm always no, disappointed. Every, is. every week's different. We're going to do Ragu Bagu. We're going to do it like every part. Fuck it. Why not? Um, but you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form. Just like Lee Polero did. Some green screen looks bad. Overall, still amazing. Samwise is best boy. Gondor's Condor <laughs> says <laughs> an epic journey. About golden cursed rings. No condors? Really? <laughs> Grant Burton says, one does not simply write an LOR haiku. This film is precious. <laughs> that was good. I that like that one a lot. That was a real and then, Josh C. coming in to end this one. A new quest begins. They must destroy the one ring. My captain. My king. Doesn't need to rhyme, but I appreciate it. Doesn't need to rhyme. Rhyme. Let's do some ragu bagu, Andy. Ragu. Ragu. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Bad Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, Lord of the Rings edition. Uh, we are going to be ranking all of the bad guys in all three of these movies uh, Fellowship, Two Towers, and Return of the King. Starting off, I mean, it, this is going to be hard, but who do we feel is the main bad guy in just this one? And part Sar in part Saruman, right? Saruman, I would say. Saruman, right? yeah. Which is the Saruman wizard. and the and the and the Ringwraiths. the wraith the ring wraiths, yeah. All right, I would say you could argue that Boromir, not, not yet. Bad not, guy. I'd not say, yet. I'd say in the next one, he's he is. I I'd oh, say he, he plays sorry, better part. Future spoilers. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just thinking of the I didn't movie. Say future spoilers. spoilers. Yeah, maybe. I, I, mean, I would. I mean, always gets just a bad place. Uh, I would say I would say Saruman and and the ring wraiths mm -hmm. are the number yeah. one right now on Lord of the Rings. Ragu Bagu is Saruman and the ring wraiths, and that sounds like a really cool '70s band that had one hit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sauron, of course. 
He's not the immediate sorry. bad guy. Yeah, he's not the immediate. I think again, he's ever present. in in yeah. the future, he becomes a more a bigger part of the threat. No um, pun intended. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. ring. Chad is saying the ring. It's also a good. Sam's sex drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it only gets <laughs> Sam in trouble though. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll leave it as Sauron in the ring for now until the ring and or Sauron the ring race for now until the ring really. And make sure right, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Ragu Bagu Vids. Uh, I'm gonna do the first tweet from this account in like three months just because oh. I just love this damn movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, any closing thoughts on Fellowship of the Ring Part One, you guys? Very excited to watch part two. I'm gonna me I'm too. gonna follow that bad boy up next week, and I and and I'm glad we're all doing this. And shout yeah, out to too. Elise for joining us today. Oh, this thank has been you. awesome. Thank you. I'm sorry if I've cut off or talked over anybody or like. No, God. that's what we do here. Uh, you're, I doing just, a, you're doing a podcast with me. I just did it to you. <laughs> <laughs> just trying so hard to reel in, you know, the passion and enthusiasm. I don't know how Andy's not sit. He's he's sitting there. We don't even see the blue shorts. I, I don't know how he's doing it. He's staying in his chair. Oh, I don't no, know, Andy. It's, it's just this is uh, such a treat and man i can't like think of what a fucking journey we're gonna go have been on by the end of this yeah um, we're gonna go it. there and back again man now, I, I have a question right, for you guys that was good that no, was i good. liked it no, yeah no, i don't want no spoilers and stuff like just using names going into this what are your guys's personal rankings of these three movies mm, going into this uh i I haven't watched them recently with a more critical eye. Mm -hmm. I'd always say Two Towers is probably my favorite because of all the action scenes. But now thinking about it, I think Fellowship might be my favorite of them all. I think it might be in order, actually. One, two, three, now that I think of it. But then, like, but then... I go three, two, one. Return of the King has so many beautiful moments that just make me bawl my eyes out. Like, oh, my God, dude. It's so hard. Okay, so Andy's one, two, three. Kevin's three, two, one. Nick? I think it's going to be three... Or we're starting first to last. I think three is the best. Second is going to be Fellowship, and then Two Towers is going to be uh, the last. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go one, three, two. Actually. Whoa, whoa, oh, one. Yeah. Is, yeah. This is your favorite. That's interesting. At least. Fuck, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, it's Two Towers is my number one, a hundred percent. Um, just so many great things set up in that movie. It's, Helm's Deep. You can't even. Can't even compare. It's all it's incredible. Only, it's so hard. It's all incredible. I it used to be two, three, one, but I will say one is climbing. Like one may even be on par with three. I now. love that everyone just gave a different answer. <laughs> Tim, like That's Tim, it's like me awesome. asking you, what's your favorite Eminem song? Like it's, yeah, okay, okay. it's too many. Like I it's so yeah. hard to like, it kind of just like whatever you're feeling at that moment. Like I I so much of this trilogy is just it means so much to me and it's so damn good and earnest and like everything about it is just like so well made yeah i just love this damn franchise well i love it we will return Wait, next Tim, friday yes do you want me to show the the footage that we're we gonna, have here and we're gonna end with that okay cool yeah we'll end, we'll end with that cab full screen without we don't need our reactions uh okay, okay. give me one <laughs> i can set that up cool <laughs> Um, but yeah, we will return next Tuesday on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to do uh, Clerks 2. We're getting to the end of the Kevin Smith Viewisk universe. Um, and then next Friday, we'll be back with Fellowship of the Ring Part 2, closing out the first Lord of the Rings movie. At least will join us for the rest of all of these movies, which is very, very exciting. Thank you for that, by the way. That's awesome. Thank it's you so guys cool so much. Thank you. Just, I just so <laughs> appreciate it. No, no, at least don't do it. Don't do it. No, 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 no. <laughs> God, how are we going to um, – Kev, how, how long do you need for that? I think I have it set up. Let's give it a try. Okay, cool. Andrea Renee, we could not let her not be a part of this Lord of the Rings in review. So I told her, I was like, hey, whatever type of feature you want to make, go for it. And she wanted to do little updates on Hobbits throughout these movies. And I'm like, you know what? I love that. Sounds that. Like a, that sounds like a good idea. So we're going we're gonna to end the show with a little clip from our good friend, Andrea Renee. The Kev. deep breath before right, the you, plunge. You guys, can't, <laughs> you guys can't talk or it'll pick you up. Okay. There he goes. What's good, Kind of Funny? Your girl, Andrea Renee here. When I heard that you were doing a Kind of Funny in review of the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition, you know I had to be involved. I love Tolkien. And I can't just leave my boy Andy defending it all by himself, but shout out to Elise. She's the best. Okay, so I've decided my fun little segments for each of these videos is going to be all about hobbits being hobbits. Hobbits going hobbiting, doing hobbity things, and otherwise just causing chaos and shenanigans. So 
for The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, Part 1, I want to talk about Weathertop. This is an iconic scene both in the books and in the movies, and it's a key moment where hobbits being hobbits really made it a bad mess for Frodo. So in case you don't remember, they're on the run from the ring race after they've discovered the ring of powers in the Shire, thanks in no part to Gollum. And they're just trying to meet up with Gandalf so they can figure out what the heck are we going to do with this ring thing anyway. They're all asleep. They think that they've escaped their first encounter with the ring race, but then hobbits being hobbits need to eat in the middle of the night frying up some crispy bacon, thinking that nobody's going to notice their bright fire up on this giant mountaintop. But of course, the ring wraiths find them. Strider comes in to save the day, but not before Frodo gets stabbed pretty bad. But thankfully, they're able to get him into the hands of Arwen and into Rivendell just in time to spare his life. But can you imagine if his hobbity friends just had kept their porkly urges in check Maybe they could have avoided this whole mess of a business anyway. But I do say, if you were going to die by ring wraith, having bacon, crispy bacon at that, as your last meal, it's not a bad way to go. And that's it for me for this time. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of In Review for the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition. I'll see you guys next time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for going on this journey with us. It's very, I know it's weird to hear me and Kevin speak uh, positively about Lord of the Rings. Get used to it for six weeks and then stop getting used to it because we're going to do it for six weeks and then we're back to just shitting on this franchise. Uh, of course, we love you all for watching live here with us. If you have subscribed to us, I'm going to read your name right now. Uh, starting off with uh, Alderas Tessen. I'm bad at this. Sub to Chris GG. Uh, A W D A. Jub WG0926, Dazaman87, Aaron Bass89, D Fleur, Novo616, Sam the Fightless, uh, Renegade, that's dope. You won today. Brown Albino, Big Bad Beluga, Eric69, Slim Sniper Snake, Sab Venom underscore gifted dim 63. Uh, let's see, it says hype PS5 on my 40th month, uh, 40 month streak. Yeah, love it. Uh, also, uh, Slim Super Super Snakes at PS5. A lot of people saying PS5, uh, Esco 6 is PS5. You guys must be have subscribed during that other show that happens before this that I never watched. Mick Nuts, uh, SSBB Phenom Party, Tyler, The Real Rye Guy, Ro uh, Roboster Hack, uh, Reveling Hippos. Let's see, Kamak, Kamak, K uh, excuse me. Kamaki Chaos, Trent1621, Dro underscore slice, Big Gamer999, uh, the NG Prince, um, True Tech9, the Fat Boy Jr., Professor Sadler, Titan83, Cambo un, uh, Combo underscore six, Athletic Nerd09, Assassin Assass Out. That is, you know what? Right, that was great. We got two winners today. That was a great one. Keep forgetting to log in and give you guys my free sub. Please don't forget that. If you have Amazon Prime, you got Twitch Prime. Do it now or do it later. <laughs> DJ Rise, uh, da, the great one. Uh, let's see. Elements 
X Elements 93. Lie Games, Joker Man D, uh, D Guy Zero, SSBB uh, Phenom has gifted a tier one sub. Uh, let's see, Mugi the Sky says, Fly you fools. Melissa with a Y, uh, Ed Ram 20, uh, let's see, uh, 214. No fear, I'm Batman. Keep, excuse me, Key Keeper One. Hey, so hype for this. Our group is watching this in, uh, in every, excuse me, this in the evening. Uh, Good Hunter L. Rolf. Steven Querable. Uh, Andrea Renee says, oh, hey, look at that streak. Wow, she has subscribed to us for 18 months and did a great dynamite drop in on this episode. Everyone go tweet at her and let her know how awesome that was. Uh, Cab BBQ, Sal G Non, uh, Infinite Zero Double O, Kobe Ashim- Ashimaru uh, 85, Oh my god, how did I get that one? Kobayashi Maru 85. My bad. Uh Viceroy 400 T Dog G2590. And finally, our final subscriber from 21 months today says uh shifty underscore gr says much love boys. Of course, T Dog uh, 2590. Sorry, I had a little mess there too. Said dad question mark. Son, is that you? Uh we'll be back on Monday, everyone, with I believe we have cool friends. Andy has a cool special guest from ESPN uh that we're gonna run. And then of course, I think Greg's doing yep. I think after that. Tuesday's uh, clerks too. So we'll be back with that as well. Love you all. Have a great weekend. Stay safe.